Echo Arena is a zero gravity virtual reality sport that requires teamwork, skill, and communication to succeed. The arena features a spawn area where the game begins. Players enter the arena through a launch tube that has a catapult ring inside to increase speed as they enter. The teams race to be the first team to get to the disc in the center, which is also called the joust. Players enter the arena full of geometric shapes that can be used strategically during a match. The three basic player positions are striker, midfielder, and goalie. Each player's echo unit is equipped with a thruster on each wrist, a booster on the back, and brakes to slow players down from the high speeds. Regrabbing or stacking is a common technique used in game. This is demonstrated when players use each other repeatedly in a slingshot motion to increase their speed. Another useful skill is stunning. This allows the players to temporarily disable the opponent's movement. Stunning can be countered by using the blocking skill, which causes the stunner to be stunned as the offensive team progresses through the arena with the disc. The defending team protects their bubble, which serves as a three-point line around the goal. When players enter the bubble, each goal accounts for just two points. When a team scores, the disc spawns on the opposing team's end of the arena to give them the joust advantage. What is going on everyone? It is Tyler McKinney here and welcome back to the NEPA Pro Series. We are continuing on in the playoffs tonight. We have two great conference finals games for you. And if you would have told me on Wednesday night that both second seeds would have gone down to third seeds, I would have thought that you were crazy. But listen, that just goes to show you how good these players are and how good these teams are in the pro series. It's just, it is it is great to watch this talent on display. And speaking of talent on display and more echo, listen, I know that there's going to be a weak law between the conference finals and the championship game, but do not worry. There will be more echo for you. And on Wednesday... Uh, on January 19th, when you normally go to tune in to the Pro Series, you're going to get a fun treat on the 19th. The first uh, first treat that you're going to get is an owner's match. And if you haven't seen the trailer yet for the owner's match, you need to go watch it. It's fun. It's got me um, looking forward to this. This is going to be a nice change of pace for us. Really, the whole evening. The whole evening is going to be fun and, you know, just, just about having fun. Whereas, you know, with this pro series, we've been really, really dialed in. And, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's been pretty exciting and pretty tense at times. But this is going to be um, an opportunity for us to have fun and, and let our hair down. So you've got that, that owner's match. And then you have the all-star match, which I think is going to be, uh, it's going to be fantastic. That's right. Those players that you voted for, that you voted in, those players are going to be the ones that are going to be playing in that game and let me know down in the chat who were those that you picked i want to know the you know the players that you picked and and let us know why with that um i think that that's going to be it's going to be a fun evening and a nice change of pace for us all right so without further ado let's go ahead and let's break down this evening's games we have two great conference finals um on tap for tonight the first one that we have is going to be the number three seed uh denver raptors against the kansas uh the echo club kansas city echo club kansas city it's hard for me and I apologize, but um, this is really a this is a revenge game for this uh, Denver team. Uh, you know what's stuck in the back of my mind, and probably in the back of their minds, is just how they got throttled by thirty points. Uh, just I think it's about three. It was three weeks ago by Kansas City. Kansas City took it to them. Kansas City was able to take the strategy that the Raptors have, and that the Raptors. You know that they, you know, the strategy that they have uh, in the game, and they were able to dismantle that. So it'll be really, really interesting to see 
how these Denver Raptors come out swinging in this matchup. You know, are they going to come out with a chip on their shoulder? And I will tell you, against the Florida Laser Sharks um, on Wednesday, they did just that. They came back out with a vengeance. They figured things out, and they really took it to the Florida Laser Sharks. Um, you know, I have to, you know, tip my hat to uh, Zach and how Zach really picked things up and put this team, you know, on on his back. And really the passing, um, you know, from this team, which we had seen all season long up until really the last couple weeks really came back you got to see this team get back um you know back in the saddle again so to say and they they really did a nice job with that and you know, I kind of look to continue to kind of see some of that happen with them. And for them to win, they're going to have to do that. You're going to have to see, you know, uh, Wit hit some clutch shots. You're going to have to see Palace and Palador step up. You're going to have to see, you know, Zach W leading things, leading the charge from the front with this team. And listen, they're going to have to use, you know, that uh, motivation from that that big loss that they had to Kansas City earlier on in the season to propel them forward in this game. But listen, this is not a Kansas City team that um, they need to take lightly because this team has been getting better and better as they've been going. And, you know, they've been finding more and more weapons and they've just been getting better and better and better. And so, you know, not only do they now have, you know, Oculusator, KFC, I'm getting better at saying that, by the way. And, um, you know, they've got they've got those two who are their main strikers, their main, you know, scorers out there. And now Paranim has really kind of slid into a, that nice spot where Paranim is, is kind of the one um, that kind of sneaks up on them, you know, that gets that extra pass, that gets that, ex, you know, that that gets there and, and, and has been really filling in nicely to pick up the slack there. And, you know, Sweet Tooth, is uh is just all over all over the board with and all over the arena with with everything you you know you usually see you know sweet tooth has stats in every column throughout the game but they're just going to need to uh, the, the biggest thing for them is is that they need to get up big early and and then I think from there um they can really fluster the uh the Denver Raptors in, in this game. And, you know, as I look at this thing and, and I really go to, to break it down and look at it, I really do believe that this Kansas city team really has the Denver Raptors numbers, uh, number. And as I, you know, it's kind of like when I, when you looked at the, the, um, the divisional series, it really showed that the times that the Denver, that Denver and Florida played, Denver had Florida's numbers. They, they just, they just did not match up well against them. And you know what? I, I got it wrong. I thought that, you know, Denver had kind of fallen apart and that they were going to take another loss, which they didn't, but they came back and, and you know, and they showed poise in that and, and, and they got back on their game plan. I just don't think that they, that in, you know, the way that they set things up and their game plan is going to really work against Kansas City. I don't think they match up well against this Kansas City team. You know, I, I think that it it was a little bit easier for them with the Florida Laser Sharks, but with KFC and Oculizator being able to both step up and be the main scorer and really take that on their shoulders, I think that that's really going to bode um, well for Kansas City and not so well for Denver. And they can really, really, really score in bunches. And they score a lot of points, and they can score fast, and they're a very, very fast team, which is going to hurt you know the Denver Raptors. Now, I will say, for the Denver Raptors here, and, and if you notice, if you get into a brawl with this Denver Raptors team, you're playing right into their game, you know, into the whole, uh, you know, the slugfest, the stuns back and forth, you know, the, the chippy game, you know, that that just kind of disjointed type of a game. They really thrive in that where it's heavy defense, you know, led by, you know, methodical offense with a lot of good passes to set up, you know, nice shots. If if this gets down to a slower defensive game, they are going to win. If Kansas City though um, decides to play their game and they can get this one out, especially get up early and get going fast. Uh, they will not look back and they will beat the Den the Denver Raptors. So as I look at this game, you know, and I'm and I'm kind of looking, you know, back at 
they, this is the third time that these two teams are, are going to play. And I think that this one is, is not going to be the blowout that it was a few weeks ago. I think it's going to be probably closer to the game that they had earlier on in the season in week two. It was a 48 to 37 score. I think that that's going to be probably a little bit more skewed towards Kansas City. Um, but I think it's not going to be as bad as the, um, as the 56 22 beatdown that they got in week two week eight. So if, 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 you know, you're looking at it, I'm thinking probably like a 45, 30, um, somewhere around in there, 45, 28. I think that, um, you know, they're always going to be out of reach in this game. I think that they're going to have some runs Denver will, but, um, I think by the end of end of the second, quarter really the end of the first half things are going to be over and done in this game that's just kind of my thoughts on this um you know I could be wrong but really this is a Kansas City team um that you know when you look at it they're seven and two and the two games that they lost they lost by a total of four points so this team could quite possibly easily be an undefeated team so this is a very very good team that plays very very well and I can see that that you know them taking that on and and that moving them into the championship game and them winning the west now let's go ahead and let's turn our attention now towards the east and this one is the um the number three seed the New York Kings against the Orlando Cyclones and you know, this is against um, a New York team that was that was able to, you know, come back. Um, excuse me. It's a New York team that was able to come back and they were uh, able to avenge the loss that they had to Dallas. And I think that that was, you know, they really came out and took it to Dallas. They got up big and they got up early and and, you know, looking at that, I think that that was their motivation for that game. And um you know, for them, I think that that was that was their big game to get that revenge um, there. You know, I can see this game. Uh, I, I really just see that this is going to be pretty much Orlando's or Orlando's game with it. Um, you know, I will say that you do have an Orlando team that uh, the last week of the season, you know, their two of their their big players, Game and Saluna, both sat out of that game, uh, and and they still, you know, boated very well. They they still played very good. Um, you know, the you know, they ended up losing, um, but when you have you know two uh, alternates in there playing for them, you know, that's still that 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 still says a lot. Uh, you know, for this, you know, for the Cyclones team that um, it's going to be an, a much more interesting game. This is not going to be a blowout by the Cyclones, I don't think, by any stretch of imagination. I think that this game's actually going to be, um, you know, this game isn't going to be the catch-up game that I think that the first game was going to be. I think that this one's um, going to be a little bit closer. And I think it has to do with really, you know, what Strem is doing with this team and, and, you know, this Kings team, they, they they know their identity. They know who they are. They know how they're playing. One of the things that really shocked me in their game against Dallas was not the fact how they scored. They scored well, um, you know, and they played well on the offensive side of things, and they ran things like they normally do. But the defense that they pulled off in that game, um, I was just I was just shocked by, by how well they played defense in that game. And they're going to need that defensive play. If they're planning on, you know, uh, doing well in this game as well, I mean, they're really going to need, you know, Pigeon and Jiggy to be, you know, disrupting things. They're going to need Al to make some big saves there, and, um, you know, and Strem really to lead them around this. But listen, you've got you've got two of the big, you know, big players in Echo right now. You've got Strem and Game going up against each other, and I think that it's going to be fun. I think you're going to be seeing them battling out the two of them throughout this game. Um, you know, right now my pick, if I if it, you know, right now I'm going with the Cyclones. I think the Cyclones are going to win this one by about eight. I think you're going to look at probably like a forty-five to, mm, you know, I don't know, for forty-five. 
you know, 30, 37, 36, something like that, 30, you know, 38. I, you know, I don't know. Somewhere around in there, like I said, seven, eight points, I think, is going to be what they're going to win by um, in this game. I think that game is going to have a huge game. I think that they're going to shut game down early, but game is going to get game's points. Game's going to have over 20 points in this game. I think that you're going to see... Um, uh, you know, Saluna is going to come back and get back in it. I think that the Cyclones are going to start off a little slow, and I think that that's going to be kind of a little bit of a hangover from um, having the substitutes play for them the last game. So they're going to have to really figure themselves out early on in this in this game with it. And I think that the Kings are going to kind of they're going to kind of pick up where they were. But I think at the end of the first quarter, I think things are going to be close. And then I think that uh, the Cyclones are going to take the lead uh, at halftime. And I think that they're not going to look back with it. I think that the Kings are going to make some runs. But I think that the Cyclones are going to hold them off with it. And I think that's going to propel them into the championship game with it. Um, so I, you know, nothing earth shattering here for me, you know, I, these, these picks are pretty conventional, um, with that, but rightly so these two teams that I've picked, um, in Kansas city and Orlando, both of these teams have dominated throughout the whole season. So, you know, I, I think that they, they're the right picks. They're the, you know, they, they're the safe picks, but I think that right now they would be the right picks going to go into the championship game. So to recap all of that, I'm going to be going with Kansas city, echo club, Kansas city over the Denver Raptors. And in the East, I'm going to be going with the Orlando Cyclones over the New York Kings. Those are my picks. I want to know, down in the chat, let me know what your picks are. I want to know what your picks are down in the chat. I want to know who you think is going to win out of the owners match. That's right, the owners match that's going to be coming up. Do you think it's going to be the East, the West, and why or why not you think it's going to be? Uh, to be honest, I really don't know how good any of the owners are. And so, you know, I could use a little help in in that regards with it um but definitely going to be a fun one want to know your thoughts down in the chat uh and as always let me know your picks down in the chat all right guys listen as always excited i'm excited for these games i hope you are excited we are getting down to the nitty gritty of it this is this is going to be fun this is going to it's it's great to see this this is the playoffs it's grit you know, it's the grind. It's what we've been what we've been watching and what they've been playing for all season long to get to this championship game and win the championship of the pro series. And listen, it doesn't get any better than this. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into the action.
Welcome Echo Units and NEPA VR fans. We've got an exciting matchup coming at you here in just a few minutes. In fact, we've got four coming at you tonight. Semi-final night of the first ever NEPA playoff series. First off, we've got the Memphis Sounds taking on the Omaha Cubs. That'll be followed up by the Toledo Clippers against the Worcester Tides. The Denver Raptors taking on Echo Club Kansas City. And our nightcap for tonight, the New York Kings taking on the Orlando Cyclones. Should be a great lineup for you again. Semifinal matches. The winners of these matches go on to the finals a week from tonight. So you know we're going to see the best that everybody has to bring to the Echo Arena. A reminder that for the NEPA Pro Series, we do have a different set of rules than what you're probably used to. We are playing four eight-minute quarters with a total score. Five-minute halftime. Each team has a one-minute timeout available per half. You will see a fifth player on the screen, but we are playing 4v4. That fifth player is a sub who will remain in the spawn room until called into the game. Overtime is played as a golden goal and no toxic or discriminatory behavior. And with that, let me introduce our play-by-play -play and analyst for tonight. I have with me tonight, Doc and Phenom. Doc, Phenom, say hello to the people. How's it going, everybody? Hello. We saw a great night of action on Wednesday night with the quarterfinal rounds. Phenom, you were a part of that. You know what it's like to play in the playoffs and the added pressure that are there. As we go into this first matchup tonight, Memphis Sounds taking on the Omaha Cubs. Tell us about the matchups in these two teams. So, I mean, you know, coming from, you know, AAA, we kind of went, uh, uh, we we kind of skirted under without having to be, you know, casted in a game. So, you know, even though some of these players have been casted by uh, VRML before, uh, this is going to be the first time this season that they're, you know, on a cast and potentially, you know, since it's been off season, you know, it's been months since they've had to play under, you know, this kind of unique pressure. So um, these two teams, uh, I will say that the on the uh, orange side there, uh, we the sounds have kind of remained their uh, their um, their roster pretty intact they've had one or two switch ups but they've been playing with each other for for a good long while cubs on the other hand they've had some roster changes um and you know the chemistry does not develop overnight so it's going to be interesting to see how how well you know these players are able to kind of build that within you know the the few weeks or you know up to nine weeks some of these players have been on the team so indeed doc and welcome to the team Thank you, thank you. I know you. you've passed a couple of these matches before, but my friend, it's the playoffs. I hope you're as excited as I am. I'm pumped. Uh, yeah, we got uh, two of the very top teams. And as Phenom said, you know, uh, I mean, these teams are still getting to know each other, getting to, getting to play together. Like uh, every every week, uh, every game is a chance to up the up the level of play. And um, I know Psychotic uh, joined the, the Cubs uh, fairly recently or like yeah kind of mid-season so you know it's all about uh it's all about feeling feeling everything out and uh so uh you know who knows the level that these teams are gonna start out at uh but i feel i feel like by the end of this game we're gonna be seeing some we're gonna be seeing some fireworks yes yeah, indeed and if wednesday night was any indication i think you're absolutely right again these players they want to go to the finals they know what's on the line here it is win or go home so they are going to be bringing their all no doubt Phenom. absolutely i mean uh you know we're going to be absolutely watching out for uh igniel sensei in goal from the from the sounds his his hands are fantastic techno uh, uh fantastic striker um in the bubble specifically you know and solid shot is you know a long time echo player so you know his experience you know kind of uh, coaching these you know newer players compared to him um it's going to be pretty interesting uh on the on the cubs side uh you know striker wise Callen has been one of the best shots in echo for a, a long time uh believe today though being at lan he might be on quest so we'll see how that affects his his uh normal normally immaculate accuracy um and then uh, you know their captain caption just as as much of an OG as uh, the other captain uh, salad shot. Uh, so we'll see 
you know, technique wise and experience wise, you know, how these, how these teams are in a, you know, it's interesting, especially in Nepo seeing these, you know, those players that have been playing for, you know, a long time, you know, being directly mixed up with, you know, some of these uh, players have only played since Quest 2 launch. So, you know, the, the difference in experience and the difference in chemistry can be uh, pretty uh, intriguing to, to watch, you know, live in action. Yes, it certainly will be. Omaha Cubs checking in with that number one ranking in the West, checking in five and three on the season so far. They enjoyed the bye on Wednesday, so they're showing up for their first ever playoff game. You can see points per game, about seven more than points allowed. That'll get you to that five and three record and that number one ranking. So they're going to have their first playoff match for tonight. Omaha Cubs coming in off of a win on or excuse me, the Memphis Sounds coming in off of that win on Wednesday. So you know that they are primed and ready to go to take on the number one team, the Omaha Cubs. The, the level the level of play that we're seeing in Echo Arena is just, it's really it's really fun to watch. I mean, it's just advancing so rapidly. Um, to, to have players of this caliber, uh, you know, you got three, three, three players uh, on the Cubs that, I'm not sure who, which of the two we're gonna get. Uh, it's gonna be uh, Caption, uh, Psychaotic, or or Callen. Uh, the thought that one of those players is actually gonna sit out. I mean, those are those are all just really fantastic talents. Um, and uh, to to think that, uh, you know, this is the level that we're seeing in the Triple A league. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just that just shows how far this game is coming. And um, you know, I think the fans are gonna really have a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. It's been a long pro series, a new season like Phenom brought up. You're mixing old talents with new. You're taking the best of the best, throwing them all in the arena together. And now it kind of culminates here in the playoffs. Communication such a key part of this game. So the, the teams have had the entire series now to try and build on that chemistry. But again, Having only played together for the last couple of months, how does that all come together when you add on the pressure of that win or go home scenario? Yeah, Faye, tell us. Tell us. Um, you mean you played Echo Arena a really long while, obviously on uh, you know a number of different teams, VR, VRML, Nepa. Um, how do you find that process? Like, how, how does the how does the team gel? Like, how do, how much does leadership uh, come into play? You know, what I mean? like, does it happen naturally? Does one person kind of step up? Like, what's been what's been your experience? I mean, that is a, a lot of questions with a lot of different answers. But you know, <laughs> the 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 main thing with that I'm excited about between you know the VRML style and the Nepa style of kind of uh, team management is that you know obviously most of these players did not pick their teams in the Nepa format. Um, whereas VRML, you know, if, if let's say me and you get into a, an arena trying to start a team and, you know, me and you are like oil and water on regrabs and passing and we're always in the same spot, then our next step is we just don't play together. We just find new people that play just like we play. And so, you know, on the on the VRML sales, you, you see these teams that are, are, you know, you know, very, very easy chemistry build because you're you're choosing the people, you know, that you you play well with to begin with. And then you kind of, you know, go with that. As far as leadership goes, I mean, you, you have a, a lot of different uh, experience levels and, and age differences. Um, in in NEPA, it's a little more, you know, curated. So we have some, you know, some people uh, kind of more ideal for that position in that position all the time. So as far as, you know, captains go, you know, a lot of the players that we you know, we have as captains are, are you know, a wealth of experience. Um, but in NEPA, it's it's kind of the opposite. You you don't have that you know player. If you if you have a player in your team that you know you just do not get along with meta wise, you know too bad. You you got to learn how to do it. You know uh, you know in, in in these matches and in these practice, you know even though you do not mesh well, you then have to learn. You have to change yourself as a player. So it's exciting for me in NEPA to see these players that you know I kind of throw these two terms out recently is you know you have your kind of static players and your, you know, your more flexible players as far as, you know, who they can play with and what styles they can do. Um, so it's it's interesting to see, you know, some of these players that are fantastic at doing exactly what they're supposed to, but then, you know, moving forwards, you know, they might not be able to 
you know mesh well with their teammates and either they they figure it out and that that team thrives or they don't and you'll see a lot of you know errors and mystery grabs and stuff like that that's super super interesting perspective uh, I hadn't really thought about, yeah, just the difference uh, that that makes, like yeah, choosing your team um, and, 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 and not, and then not only choosing your team, but be, being able to unchoose your team, right? Right. Uh, right. Being able to say, hey, this just ain't working uh, versus like, no, I mean, we like, we don't have a choice. This is, this is, this is who, this is who we are at, uh, that's a different, that's a different vibe and a, a little bit more like uh, kind of traditional sports in that, uh, in that, in that vein. Exactly. In AAA, I definitely see there's probably a, a lot more plastic players just because, you know, they're still growing as players, you know, all, you know, almost all of them on the, on the pro side, a lot of them, you know, have been playing for a number of years, they they're very good at playing the way they play and on teams, you know, some of these people have been on the same teams for for a number of years you know, playing with the same pool of players, you know, they kind of learn each other and, and figure each other out. So now coming in on the, on the pro side, I, I'm, you know, it's, you're going to see a lot more difficulties when you, you find yourself on a team with a player whose, you know, meta is unlike your own, you know, you, you then just have to figure it out. There's no other choice. You just, you, you know, so it's nice to be able to see, you know, players that normally wouldn't get along both in meta and in, in, on, you know, teams normally have been kind of quashed in some ways by the, you know, the scrambling of, of, of players and metas and teams and game philosophy and age and maturity levels and everything has just been completely thrown in a, in a, a, a tempest. So it's very interesting. You know, I'm particularly uh, interested in that dynamic because like, I mean, I love, I love sports. I love high level play. I love entertainment. Um, and uh, you know, I have the word education in my name for a reason. I, I really like growth. Uh, I, I like, um, I like, um, challenge and i feel like uh, sports is uh offers um because of the nature of there there's some something to be won and lost uh it, it brings in the ego it brings in the desire to win it brings in uh all of the all of the good things about competitive nature and also some of uh, the nasty parts uh, of of human nature um that that gives us a chance to to react to that and and grow from that and say like hey yeah you know uh i'm i'm mad at myself or i'm mad at uh you know my my teammate or i'm mad at the whole team or i'm mad at you know the the, the coach that we brought in to to help us prepare or you know whatever okay so now what what are we going to do about that you know how are we going to respond uh how are we going right. to are we going to come together or are we going to or are we going to tear each other apart you know uh and uh, so I think um, I think Echo Arena, uh, especially for for younger folks, but for all of us, um, is uh, is an opportunity to kind of excite some of those uh, some of those parts of our of our nature, and then uh, and 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 work with them. Yeah, it's it's kind of nice that that the you know the hands tying of well, you know, if you if you don't like your your team, right, then you too bad. Figure it out. You know, grow as a player. You know, get better. You know, figure out why you don't like that person's meta. What you know, why can't you regrab with that person? Instead of normally, it's just like if I can't regrab with you, you know, in tryouts or you know, team stuff, then it's like okay, then we just we'll move on. We'll find somebody else. But here, it's you know, you know, the players that you know kind of thrive in those conditions are are the ones that are going to end up being you know the true assets to their teams. You'll see some players that you know, you know, play a a, a version of Echo that is unique to them, and you know, if it functions within that team then it's great. If it doesn't function within that team, then, you know, they'll have to either figure it out or, you know, you'll just see, you know, teams fall apart, but. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, sounds like we are getting started. Okay. Uh, well, it looks like the players have elected to uh, go ahead and start as a 3v4. Talon 101, Billy Isms, and Rev on the Omaha Cubs. Igneal Sensei, Solid Shot, Techno Wubs, and Faster Rex for the Memphis Sounds. And uh, we're going to hope that uh, Caption and or uh, Psychotic are able to hop in. 
Uh, but for now, we're gonna bring it to you uh, straight like this, three v four. So let's see what these let's see what these folks can do. Um, yeah, uh, what's your what's your initial thought, Faye, about uh, about the the psychology of both of these teams right now? I mean, either you know, they're probably both. Well, the sounds are probably ready. You know, they were they were, they were kind of ready to go. It looks like we might have some some technical problems on the the Cubs. So I imagine the three players on the Cubs are, you know, probably a little a little all over the place, a little you know confused at what's going on. So you know, they might play a little more erratic. And the fact that they're playing a three v four, you know, it's it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a difficult one. But you know, within that, maybe they can pull it together here and and show us something spectacular. All right, well, let's see it on the backside. Techno Wubs pushing off the backboard, going in for the under, the slam in the bottom pocket. So it took them, uh, took them about a minute and a half, even in the four by four v three. So you know, sometimes your your offensive meta can uh, can need to change as well. You kind of get psyched out a little bit by the how much space you have, and um, just like. Kind of maybe not not getting fully tuned up because you feel like it should be easy, right? Yeah, I agree. So coming in, Billy isms. Oh, an opportunity there. Pick it up, Rev with the slam, tying it up. So uh, not gonna give up early days. Omaha Cubs taking it right back and tying the game. I mean. Uh... Obviously, the uh, the three on four are not affecting them quite yet. So let's see you know, with these players. Let's see if they can keep keep that uh, that train going. Yeah, you gotta you gotta bring pressure, right? That front stack, a lot of pressure is on that front stack for the offense. And Billyisms and Rev are doing the work there. Callan coming back, gonna have to do a lot of work. Yes, Techno Wubs finding the space. No one there on the backboard because again, it is a three v four. That front stack not quite able to uh, create enough pressure, and the the passing from the uh, from the sound was was really crisp. Yeah, it's all going to be about you know the sounds are going to be more control, and the uh, the Cubs is going to be all about constant pressure. Probably going to see that you know one player back towards defense, and the front stack kind of old three v three meta, but uh, obviously a, a higher a higher speed than the normal three v three. Yeah, beautiful pass down low. Oh, can't quite handle it. Was Techno Wubs. Two players in the area. Solid shot. Going to get stunned out and was able to drop it down low, though. Igneal Sensei coming in. Rev sending it back out. So, uh, but look at that. Immediately re grab and then Billyism's doing some work. Uh, not quite able to clear it out, though. Rev and Billy uh, doing some doing some re-grabbing. So it's going to be Igneal Sensei. Goal open. Gets the rebound. No. Twice off the off the ding ring. Once on the right, once on the left. And here we go. Caption coming in. Only down by two. Can Caption bring it in before they score again? Uh, but that's got to be a huge lift for the Omaha Cubs right now. Oh, Techno Wubs. Getting two more on the board. So we finally have our 4v4 bringing it to you, fans. I hope you're ready because Caption is in the building. I mean, yeah, they held off nearly half the game. You have four full minutes and are only down by four points. So they can absolutely bring this back. All right, so let's see it. Uh, that rollout, not quite good enough. Uh, that's a really good clear. It's going to bounce. No, I thought it was going to be flat, but it goes right to Faster X, sending it over to Solid Shot. Solid Shot on the backboard. That is too tough to stop. Solid Shot. Bringing Memphis Sounds up by six. So let's see if the uh, Omaha Cubs can regroup here. They're down, only down by six. And remember, of course, it is a four-quarter uh, matchup, not round winning. Uh, and so plenty of time to, to come back really in pretty good shape. Uh, that had a chance. It's going to be Billy pushing off the... Oh, just bouncing off the bottom ring. It's going to be Rev getting dumped down by Solid Shot, but stole right back by Billy. Taking a shot on an own open goal. There is a lot of dinging right now, a lot more scoring that could be happening. But uh, yeah, uh, the both of these teams, I think, just a bit discombobulated from that half hour wait. And then getting started with a 3v4 Techno Wubs goal is open. Not going to miss that shot. 
Oh my goodness. Master X calling it out with the peace sign, letting it fly. Memphis Sounds up by nine. So, okay. Cubs hanging out. Let's see what they do on their offensive joust. One left, uh, two left, actually. They're running a relay. They do get it to the far player. Billy Isms on the right side. They're going to elect to take a shot. It's a little bit wide, and Faster X is going to re-grab to it. Send it over. That was a uh, open player Billy Isms, but uh, I think it was Caption electing to take the shot. Talon now with the disc. Floating through space, not under pressure, but uh, solid shot. Oh, Faster X jumping out with the jab. And it's going to be multiple players cutting in. Talon going to be in a dangerous location, but two players jumping out. Caption now with the disc operating in space. Solid shot with the solid shot on the head. And that's going to be a good clear. Four players for the sounds and the slam. Both teams' defense is being very aggressive in the bubble. Lots of stuns, lots of quick turnovers over and over, not a lot of clears. So, you know, right now it's just the the sound's ability to capitalize on those, you know, those errors instead of you know, losing it and getting it thrown back on the other side. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, yeah, the, the score has significantly gone in the wrong direction for the Cubs, despite the fact that they're now in a 4v4. It's almost like the sounds have turned it up. So Callan now dubbing it down low, Billy Isms floating. Maybe a back pass, yes. Uh, Rev is high, no one's guarding Rev. Oh, off the backside, Billy. Big Neil Sensei unable to turn around in time for that one. Beautiful bounce shot. And that's huge because Cubs were getting shut out uh, for about five and a half minutes there on the board. And they are, they're now on their defensive joust. So let's see what they do with their defensive stacks. Looks like they're going to send two forward. One is hanging out on station. One is uh, on the backside. So they do have that backboard covered, unlike when they had the 3v4. Techno Wubs to the cutter. No, it was Igneal Sensei. And that's going to wind down the clock on quarter one. So, fans, a little bit late. But we do now have a 4v4. And that's going to be some exciting news for the rest of this game. And with that, we will take you to a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Honda. One man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Honda motorcycle. ATVs and side by sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. This Wednesday, January 19th, the owners take over the arena and battle it out to see who can take home bragging rights, followed by the Pro Series All Star match. Votes end at 11 p.m. Central tonight, so get your votes in now over at discord.gg forward slash NEPA. You can only catch those here on NEPA TV. For more information on the teams, follow NEPA TV on social media or visit NEPAVRPro.com. We're getting into the second quarter action. I'll send it back to Doc and Faye in the booth. Uh, here they come, Faye. We got ourselves a game now, 4v4. They're launching out of the tubes, and it is the Sounds soundly winning that one on the joust. Talon getting the tip, though. So the typical uh, chaos of the neutral joust, but it looks like there's an open goal. Ooh, McBeal Sensei not going to miss that one. So Memphis Sound continuing their run. They started the 3v4 or the 4v4 section uh, up 6-2, to two, uh, or 8-2, to two, sorry. So only up by 6. Now they're up by 12, Faye. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see if that one minute kind of regroup that the Cubs had uh, does anything for him. Obviously, with Caption kind of coming in mid game there, uh, you know, potentially the sounds kind of struggling to play against the three people, mostly just because it's, you know, it's an unusual play style to play against. You know, you kind of, once they found their stride with their normal, you know, four person, you know, versus four person offense, but, you know, when that, when that, you know, 3v4 kind of increases your ability to, you know, 
have to do a lot of stuff really rapidly. Sometimes it throws off the, the people on the uh, the advantage just because you're not used to playing with that. Yeah, and the Cubs coming out and doing what they needed to do, getting an early score. They run man pressure. It works for the moment. Uh, Faster X able to get it. Oh, no, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Faster X punking two players in the tunnel and an absolute dimer in a tiny window to get in the corner there. That was insane. Yeah, flip that. Absolutely, Ivan Thrive. So uh, typical pub style rollout, one left, one right, one center. Billy Isms with the disc, trying to send it over to the left side, Caption. Caption, oh, going right into the defense, Techno Wubs, sending it down low. But on the backside, Callen was right there in the right location. That's a shot. Oh, that was a great save by Faster X. Beautiful clear out. And now the sounds are on their regrab. But look at that. Callen, again in the right location. That's another shot. No. Oh. Oh. Wow. So close. On both the shot and the re rebound and the regrab, Techno Wub sending it back. And that's a that's a shot there. That's got a chance. No. Bounces on the wrong side, but look at that, Techno Wub. Nothing fancy, nothing stylish. Just good fundamentals. Pick it up, put it in. Yeah, unfortunate to uh, to see the, the headbutt. I, I'm not sure what the, the thought process there was when you're already down so much to to be trying to take a you know a one point advantage off of that and ending up with losing five. Yeah, it was big. Uh, I, I was, that was big. I mean, uh, just like you say, if it works, it looks good, but when it doesn't, it looks it looks pretty bad. Down 15 now are the Omaha Cubs. Still tons of time. Remember, it is four quarters. Uh, still five minutes left in quarter two. And then we got two more quarters after that of eight minutes. So the vast majority of time in the game left. And Billyism is going to be floating back, looking for a pass. Rev on the backside. Yes. So just like that, uh, already in this round, Omaha Cubs have scored as many points as they did in round one. So that, that bears good news for them. Ivan Thrive saying Techno Wub's carrying hard. I mean, everyone from Memphis Sounds doing pretty good. Techno uh, Solid Shots had some incredible defensive stops as well uh, that have taken some some goals away. Look at that. McNeil Sensei re-grabbing with Solid Shots, sending it back in. So Memphis Sounds immediately responding to the goal from Omaha Cubs and putting it back up by 15. Offensive joust now for the Cubs. Two left. They're looking like they're running a relay. That was a, an attempted pass to caption, but it was a little bit low. And that's going to be solid shot picking it up, tapping it back. Beautiful reset. It's going to be Igneel Sensei singing it over the trap area. Faster X. Can't take a shot from there. Uh, oh, almost had to eat my words. Took a couple of bounces and very nearly found the backside of the rim. Rev and Billyisms. Attempting to re-grab, getting stunned out by Igneel Sensei. So really nice defensive work uh, on the offensive side for the Memphis Sounds, causing a lot of pressure, making it very, very difficult right now for the Cubs to get it out of their own side. That's a good clear, though. This is bouncing in, but it's going to be Techno Wubs picking it up, sending it back. Caption. Oh, no. Billy! Oh, yes! That's what you need to do. Slap it down in. None of this headbutt nonsense. Get two points on the board. Cubs just need to keep pushing just a little bit and a little bit. Not worry about those big, big uh, steps. So on their offensive joust now, Memphis Sounds. Oh, can't quite connect with Techno Wubs. Callen's going to send it back. That's going to be a good clear. Let's see who Stack is going to get together. Ooh, Callen and Billyism got broken up. Uh, or no, rather, they had to, had to redirect. Uh, my apologies. That is a beautiful pass, though. Oh, just took a funny bounce. Not quite sure who that was going to, but it is deep in the bubble now. No one in the area, though, for the Cubs. And it'll have to be sent back over. So... 
some back and forth action right now. Neither team really taking advantage of some some opportunities. Uh, the the score is still down 13. So Cubs doing well to stay in the game. And if they can get you know uh, five more points on the board uh, this round and uh, and not give up any, they, they could be in a good position going into halftime. Let's see what they do. Billyisms open down low as is Callen. Uh, Rev gonna take it back, sending it over to the left side. It's gonna be Caption finding the pocket. Caption sends it in, and Omaha Cubs are knocking on the door of this being a single point difference. Yeah, only 11 points down right now. I mean, they still have plenty of time uh, to bring this back. One, we all know that Echo is a, a game of streaks, so one good streak could, could you know tie this up or potentially even put Cubs in the league, and something like that is going to be a good way to do it. Yeah, that was a heartbeat away from getting a, a, a three and bringing it within eight. But uh, Omaha Cubs are pressing right now. Caption with the disc getting stunned out. Techno was coming from behind like an assassin and sending it back to the other side. Techno and Faster X re-grabbing and Techno with the score back up by 13. So that was a really, I feel like that was a critical little exchange there, uh, Faye, as we get really close to halftime. Yeah, I mean, I just checked in stats here. Uh, every single player is uh, in well into double digits of stun. So, you know, kind of unsight unseen, a lot of brawling happening in this game. You can see that this is kind of, you know, many turnovers, many short turnovers. And the, the mid play is very aggressive and very kind of man on man for the, most of this game. Master X with the slam, and that is not what the Cubs wanted. Back by, back down by fifth team as we go into the halftime and we will be right back after a word from our sponsors Come and compete with the pros, March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. This one-of-a-kind event is supporting the Special Olympics and hosted at Bush Stadium's exclusive Redbird Club. With multiple brackets, side activities, and more, this will be the LAN event of 2022. Go to NEPAVRPro.com for more information. Guys, gotta outwork your opponents. Let's go. Three, two, one, fight. What's ah. Oh, my goodness, what is going on? What are y'all doing, man? Come on! And welcome back to the halftime show. Memphis Sounds taking on the Omaha Cubs. Omaha Cubs with a rough start based on their captain, Caption, showing up just a little bit late. Doc Fainom, it seemed like it took them a while to find their groove. They're about halfway through the second quarter, though. They seem to settle down. 
But just like that, Techno and Memphis makes a run at the end to stretch the lead back out going into the second half. What do you think the captains are talking about with the teams at halftime? I mean, it's just going to be, you know, one of those things where on the, on the Cubs side, you know, they got to just kind of find their bearings and, and play like they played all season. I mean, they're they're in the, in the playoffs for a reason. So, I mean, you know, they played really well all you know all nine weeks they're here you know unfortunate that we had some some personnel delays but you know it, captions probably just in there telling them hey you know let's calm ourselves let's play like we've been playing on the other side i mean i'm sure the uh the sounds are have the exact same conversation but in a, a much lighter tone and doc we saw techno wubs go off there in the first half what kind of adjustments do you think omaha will make to try and slow him down i mean i I don't. If I'm the captain of Omaha right now, I'm focusing on on our play. Um, you know, Omaha has looked uh, not in sync, and we should expect that given the the conditions of the game, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, if you're a player, you know, you're you're starting 30 minutes late. You're you're not even sure what whether that's allowed. You're not sure. You're you're not feeling confident. You don't know. You know, are are your teammates going to jump in? Are you going to have to forfeit? Um, you know, maybe you were warmed up, like, you know, maybe you weren't warmed up because obviously these players couldn't, they weren't ready. They, they weren't, they, they didn't have a warm up scrim, you know, they didn't play together to, to get, to get going. So, um, so there's, there's just a lot of missed connections happening right now on, on passes. Uh, you can see players getting snuck up on from behind and getting stunned out, which means the communication may not be there. Uh, so if I'm Omaha, I'm I'm focused less on what Memphis Sounds are doing and more about our own ability to to gel and be cohesive and be communicative and, and execute our strategy. So let's see what they do. They won that joust and that's big. The backstack coming in. Can they get there? This is an opportunity to get going early off the backside. Absolutely rev, revving it up. And that is exactly what Omaha needed. Down 13. There is no reason to think that you are out of this game and just a little spark like that, uh, you know, can can be the real difference. Rev, absolutely lifting the Omaha Cubs right there. Yeah, I mean, even in our in our our my team's AAA match, I think in the uh, preseason with the warm up games, uh, the Mudheads came back from I think it was like a 35 to 15 lead. It was it was a surmountable lead. So and it was in the, in the second or the third quarter, just like this. So. It'd be interesting to see, you know, after that momentum shift, you know, you know, and their their ability to kind of control this disc. One more score here, you know, get that streak started and you know, keep moving. Just like that, the Cubs are bears right now. Absolutely growing up in round in uh, the half, half, half time, and there is just a lot more energy from that side. They are sparking it up. That was a beautiful, beautiful pass. Uh, and a beautiful finish. So let's see if the Memphis Sounds, I mean, this is where Memphis Sounds need to step it up as well. Because if they can get a couple of uh, scores themselves and kind of stem that tide, that can be the big difference between allowing that run or not. McNeil Sensei with the disc, floating in space, not under pressure right now. So gonna move it up. This is dangerous. Solid shot getting stunned out though. Caption, tabbing it out. Backside player, McNeil Sensei with the disc. Calm, cool, moving it back. Going to send it over to the left side. Solid shot. Maybe back to Igneel Sensei. Yes, no one's guarding him. Oh, but Techno Wubs had gone back to stun the goalie. That was a pass that was very lucky to get recollected. Now it's a bit of chaos. This is the opportunity that Omaha needs. Callan with the disc. Just clear it out, boy. Yes, the clear. It is good to the mid. And Techno Wubs going to get stunned out. Billy doing what Billy does. Doing the stun thing. Solid shot getting stunned out. This is absolute perseverance right now. Nothing to say, Omaha Cubs, they have got to get a little bit of action right now. That is dangerous, though. That has a chance to get have a techno love. No, Faster X, no. Rev says no. Not right now. Not right now. Under pressure, Memphis Sounds are feeling it. Their passes are a little bit off the mark right now. They are a little bit clumped up right now. And Omaha has a little bit of options. Faster X, though, coming in and absolutely stemming the tide. That was a huge back and forth, won by Memphis Sounds, and they're back up by 13. I mean, both these teams getting really in close and personal with each other. I and mean, this is, you know, both mid play and defensive bowl play from both teams is really aggressive. So you're seeing, uh, you know, 
a, a player on player, you know, kind of 1v1 situation. You know, in, in some cases, it was almost an 8v8 or a 4v4 situation on one disc. So, you know, they're very, very aggressive, you know, probably from the uh, the Cubs just because of, you know, their constraint in time and, you know, maybe their you know, their mentality of, you know, having to be able to catch up here. Whereas Sounds is, you know, it seems to be their kind of wheelhouse. So they're they're fighting kind of mano a mano on the, uh, the, the brawler state. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we are going to have to leave this game at some point in order to get to the pro series, but uh, it doesn't matter, viewers, because this is it right now. Igneal Sensei stuffing it. Every play right now is the, is going to define this game. If uh, Memphis Sounds can keep it up, they are going to keep it ahead and it's going to keep it out of reach going into round four. If if the Cubs can get some uh, momentum, oh, Rev with the stop, Callan with the clear out. Can they do it? Omaha Cubs, you gotta bring energy right now is your chance. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Memphis Sounds not folding under the pressure. Cubs got a little bit aggressive there, jumped out a goal, left it open, and they they gave up the points. 15 back for the Sounds. So, okay. Cubs, this is your chance. Bring the energy. Rev has been stepping it up. Billy has been stepping it up. Callan, floating up. Looking around, looking back. Two players for Memphis Sounds retreating. They don't want to give up a goal, but they're going to give it up to Callan. No, that was a beautiful shot for the pocket. It's going to be picked up back by Caption, sending it over to the, the Callan. Callan going in. Callan with Rev taking the attention of the goalie not getting a stun out but uh, but forcing the goalie to have that shield so back within 13 cubs they've got to go on a run right now they do not want to start round four down 13 or 15 they want to bring it back within eight they've got to bring pressure let's see what their defensive stack does they do send two they're bouncing billy and rev redirecting they have the disc now billy trying to send it over rev maybe a reset maybe a clear they go for the clear Caption and Callan get a little bit broken up. They have an open open opportunity though on a two on one. Caption, Callan on the nest. Callan cutting, absolutely. Back within 11. I mean, I think it was like first or second, beginning of second quarter, I had, I had mentioned that they were 11 apart. So, I mean, these teams, even though there's a little bit of difference between the score, you know, from that first quarter, I mean, they have been going back and forth, you know, the last 16 minutes of this game. Back and forth indeed. Back within 11, this is the stop you need right now. Rev and Billy, can you get the pressure? Techno Wubs with a beautiful back pass, showing off the strategy. Igneal Sensei, letting his team know, we own this arena. We have the disc. Goal is open, solid shot though. Elects for the back pass. And that could be strategy, or he might have just not noticed that the goal was open. Uh, Faster X sending it over. Oh, beautiful passing right here by the sounds. Oh, the difference between dinging in and dinging out right there, Faye. You know, the Echo Gods have spoken in that in that case. And uh, I mean, right now, if you're if you're the Cubs, you know, you've been 11 back most of the game, you know, a minute and a half to go. You can finish 11 or maybe even eight back, you know, get two scores going into the fourth quarter, at least shift that momentum. I mean, it, it, you know, it's it's this this game is 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 very, very momentum based. You know, you, you have it one moment and all of a sudden you look and, you know, you're tied or you look and you're 16 out in a, in a, in a split second. So something like that. One more goal, you know, a good steal from the the uh, defensive joust here. And, you know, it, we could see an entire momentum shift on this game last minute. They need this. Come on, Echo fans. If you are a Cubs fan right now, they need energy. Send it in the chat. Let them know that you support them. And same on the other side, if you're a Sounds fan, they need to hear you because holy cow, they're, I mean, this is it. Oh, there it is. Billy is, I'm tapping it up. Can the back stack get there? Caption flying in. Callan delivering the big time three. They are within eight. I don't know if that's a caster's. What's the opposite of a caster's curse, Doc? You're, you're better at this than me. With a caster's, uh, caster's fate or something like that. Caster's call out. Yeah, there call out. Bill, I'll call that a big time three. 18 seconds. Omaha Cubs 
look at can they get another score if they can go in with eight it's great if they can go in at six or five this is an absolute game vacant ace calling it absolutely this is a game solid shot missing it okay the disc is loose not enough time for a goal though that was a big time quarter from the cubs bringing it back within eight single digits for the first time since round one we're gonna go to our sponsors but don't go anywhere we'll be right back Friday nights at 9.30 p.m. Central. Be sure to check out Late Night with Ivan Thrive right here on Twitch. With fun games and exclusive interviews, we never know who will show up on Late Night VR. So join us at 9.30 p.m. Central right here at twitch.tv forward slash the NEPA TV at 9.30 p.m. Central. And we are going to get right back into the action. Here comes a great fourth quarter headed your way. Gentlemen, it seems like the Cubs have found their groove. Let's see if they can keep the momentum going. Echo fans, this is the fourth quarter that you all wanted. Crawling back are the Cubs. Flying in, winning the offensive joust. Callen with the disc, sending it over to the left side. Caption, oh, what a save by McNeil Sensei. Every play right now is absolutely crucial. If the Cubs are going to win, it's not going to be by much. So every save like that, it could be the difference. That could have been the winning save. Billyism's trying to make it. No. Oh, oh, what a shot. Billy. Back within six. Omaha Cubs. I mean, this is the this is the highest pressure moment right here. I mean, you know, you 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 started off without a player. You started off three v four, fought all the way back up in three quarters. You're now six back. But I mean, we could see even you know what happened to my team uh, on on Wednesday, where you know super close match the entire time, and then that fourth quarter just falls away from you. And you know, you could you could see that same exact thing happen right now. Either way, we see a a, a massive comeback or a near comeback, you know, kind of crumble away to failure. So it, it, it really goes on the wills of these players and the the, you know, the ability to kind of solidify yourself and, and keep playing as you've done the, the entire game. Oh, it is so close. It is blow for blow right now. Callen sending it over to the left side. It catches the hand of Rev. Rev, beautiful pass to Caption. Caption with an option. Goes on the, le the right side himself. Billy with the stun out. There is plenty of room to operate. Caption sends it right back. So these two teams are punching. We have absolutely got a fire game right now, Thanom. Yeah, I, it, it, I'm just, I, I just, I am so eyes on this game right now. I can't even think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if your heart's not pumping, uh, you might want to see a doctor uh, and not a doctor of education, a real one. Techno, sending it down low. Faster X, can't quite connect. Uh, bounced off the, the round part of the, of the ramp. Rev, sending it over. That's going to bounce low. Can the, can the back stack come in? Solid shot. Very calmly sends it back. Techno, scoops it up. Solid shot over there. There is no stack together for anyone right now. Uh, just like that, though, a stack does get together. Igneel Sensei, right there. Faster X, re it to it. Oh! Wow! And oh, just no. like that, the lead is back to nine. With five and a half minutes left, there is still plenty of time. Although, whew, if you're a, if you're the Cubs right now, you are definitely pumping. Yeah, that's that's got to you know the the magnitude of that that score. You know, three points you, at this late in the game. You know, it's not a two. You know, that open goal feeling of you know being this close to a comeback and then having an open shot made on you. I mean, you you know the Cubs are gonna have a a hard time they just need to collect themselves and you know keep playing like they have been beautiful back pass rev over to caption caption to callen callen oh 
getting stunned out. Wow, what great teamwork, what great vision. And even though they were down, they are still with the back pass. They're showing a lot of calm, cool, collective behavior are the Cubs. Down by seven, that is absolutely plenty of time with four and a half minutes left right now. So, offensive relay, faster X, delivering it down low. Oh, Caption and Callen, they've got the disc. Beautiful uh, pass though, Rev getting stunned out. Oh, Techno getting the, the very clear. Oh, I don't know what the hell's going in. It's going to be on the black side, solid. Oh, so every time the Cubs crawl in and it feels like they could tie it up, Memphis sounds are rising to the occasion and punching right back. In just a second, there, the fantastic, you know, backstack defense that caught that, and the, you know, the, the the decent clear, but you know, the sounds just, you know, their their mid defense is just oppressive. So you know, it's just the second they get one, they just take it right back. Absolutely. Oh, and just like that, they have taken it right back. This is very dangerous. Techno loves zero angle. Pa passes over to McNeil Sensei. Oh, back to Techno. Wow. It Neil Sensei recognizing they didn't have the angle, pumping down, and then seeing the defense come in, passing it over you know, to finish it up. 11 points down with three and a half minutes. It is not over yet, but you got to feel like you got a little bit of breathing room right now if you're the Memphis Sounds. Left side relay. This down goal. Red. Open goal. You got to make that note. Oh, that was a big time opportunity missed. Oh, Billy, though, getting it back. Passing it over to the left side, Revs. Revs under pressure from Techno. Techno looking for a pass. Too many players clumped up. They thought they were going back on defense. Now they are on offense, having to regroup. Regroup they do. Rev, bottom pocket, yes. Not out of it yet, not giving up. Back within nine with two and a half minutes left. Faye, can they do it? Uh, you know, I'm no math math genius like Sir Dimwe is, but I mean, I... I... I believe what they're nine points down, three goals. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Igneal Sensei delivering it over to Techno Wubs. No. Showing off the clock awareness. Faster X. They're happy to play monkey in the middle right now. Igneal over down to Techno. They are going to force that stack to come through. All they got to do is break those stacks and hold on to the disc. Igneal Sensei. Passing it over to Techno. Techno now has to clear it through. There's no player on the backside because all of those players for the Omaha Cubs were forced to uh, to add that pressure. Uh, so now Billy sending it over to the, to the right side. Callen uh, is going to have the disc, but immediately getting stunned out. So best defense is a strong offense, or best offense is a strong defense. I don't know. But anyway, with the disc, Techno loves Captain clearing it back out. Time is definitely ticking down right now, Thanom. Yeah, I, it, the the two minutes on the clock trying to waste it down. I mean, that is it, it's a risky play because you know one mistake and that that backstack bites in and takes a three pointer and then all of a sudden you know you're kind of shaken. You know, but thankfully the the sounds were able to do exactly what they wanted to do and kind of you know mess around with it for just a moment and in in the long run that could make a huge difference to you know peel thirty seconds off the clock. Who? And as the seconds are winding down, so is the opportunity for the Omaha Cubs, Master X, clearing it through. And every every second that winds down now, I think the door is shut. And just like that, we gotta close it off. So what a game. Holy cow, fans. I mean, you gotta feel for the Omaha Cubs. What a rough start, but they did not give up. Even being down big time at the half. They still fought back. They still had chances late in the game, bringing it back within six, maybe even within four at one point. But give it up for the Memphis Sounds. Not losing their cool, not forgetting uh, that, they, that they were on top, not allowing their lead slip by to, to get to them. And in the end, they're going to take this, and they are going to go to the very first NEPA AAA Finals. A great matchup indeed, and just the start of our action tonight. We got started a little bit late, so do not go far. We are going to jump right back into the action with the other AAA semifinal of the night, the Toledo Clippers 
taking on the Worcester Stock Tides. Excuse me. Uh, say that 10 times fast. We will be right back. Do not go far. More AAA action coming your way. And welcome back. I hope everybody enjoyed the first semifinal match. It was a good one, albeit a little non-standard, but it did turn out some great action. I'm expecting more of that as we get into the second AAA semifinal of the night. The Toledo Clippers coming off a win over Buffalo. Fainam, you may be familiar with that game in the quarterfinals. And the Worcester Tides checking in with the number one seed going up against Toledo. What do we think going into tonight? I mean, having just come from playing the uh, the Clippers, I mean, they're a, a fantastic team. Um, Tortoise and Time and Duke are all uh, very fast regrabbers and very fast staggers. Um, Breezebo is going to be kind of beating up anything that moves out there. And then, you know, on the other side, you know, with Tiny Thug and, you know, obviously Gorn and, and Monster and, and Draco, all of these players are fantastic players. Looks like we might have James in as a, a cautionary sub. Um, instead of Geo tonight for the for Toledo, um, but uh, other than that, I mean, depending on who who the Tides play, it can really change up some stuff. But um, we're gonna be watching for uh, Paravalo is a fantastic goalie. Uh, Gorn is a, a masterful striker. He's been around a, a long time, and looks like we're we're starting right into this. So I'll throw it to you, Doc. Well. I mean, I'm still I'm still reeling from that last game. I, I was I, I really. Thought we're gonna we're gonna make a, a run for it and they did make a run for it the memphis sounds just barely holding them off but i think we're gonna see some fast acts right here i expect time and tortoise and yes it was tortoise getting a hand on one of the very fastest regrabbers in fact in the league his in, in echo arena history uh has several records uh so look for them look at those look at them go just getting back so easy Time and tie guards. I mean, there are some there are some real top tier players in this matchup uh, on on both sides. Tortoise with the disc, gonna take a shot. Oh my! Goodness. Tortoise with the mail slot, starting it off right. Toledo Clippers up by three. Always a good way to start your match with a forty meter, eighteen per second uh, cannon from tunnel. So first offensive joust of the evening for the for the Tides. And uh, it's going to be Draco sending it over to the right side. Caravallo sending it over to the left side. Lose the disc, though, and it's going to be Tortoise in time. Oh, my God, they are just so fast. That leech, oh, my God. Warren Jr. with a beautiful leech, but Tortoise with a violent finish. Toledo Clippers up by five. Get that stack just absolutely ripping through. Yeah, just checking my spark here. Uh, the highest player uh, with ping right now in the game, it would be uh, Gorin at 55. 
So we're gonna see some very, very fast uh, regrabs and some very fast stacks from this uh, from this game tonight. Tiny Thug tried to make a pass over to Gorin, but uh, not able to connect. Jumping out was Duke Tigarbs with a beautiful clear, and the stack coming in Tortoise. Oh my God, Tortoise, showing off eight points for the Clippers, eight points for the Tortoise. Not slow is the tortoise. That, that's a very fast tortoise we got there. So, Toledo Clipper showing it off. Uh, can somebody in chat or in my ear let me know, how do you pronounce the city that is where the tides are from? Is it Worcester? Because in England, they would call that Worcester. I don't think there's a wrong answer at this point. I think you just kind of free, you just freestyle it. And you know, whatever comes out, that's that's good enough. Well, I like that as a caster, no matter what I do, I'm right. Tiny Thug, in the disc, delivering it over to Draco. Oh, Draco just getting the handle lost. Time jumping out, but not able to get it either. Multiple players fighting, there's a bit of a scramble. And Breezebo, uh, not gonna get it. Beautiful back pass, but uh, maybe uh, that's a chance for Gorin to hang out, uh, electing to push forward. Um, their offense is finding their shape. Oh, no, dude, Tyler says, no, not in my house. Time clears. Wow. So early days, the Clippers are just looking really, really strong, uh, but not giving up yet are the Tides. And they've got an opportunity here. But just like that, those stacks, Time and Tortoise, are just flying. I mean, er everywhere the disc is, that's where they go. Tortoise. Oh no! Has not missed the shot, as far as I can tell, and has scored all the points for both teams. Tortoise. 11 to nothing. I mean, yeah, at this point, if, if I'm the uh, the Tides, my, my goal is to either stop that stack or be faster than it. I mean, with with how consistent their stacking is, you, you got to come into this game having some sort of plan. Yeah, I mean the plan the plan for the Clippers is definitely regrab and just just be faster. Time, Tortoise, Tortoise getting in on all the action. Finally, someone other than Tortoise scored, but Tortoise did get the assist. So uh, early days, Tortoise definitely. Uh, MVP candidate, although time uh, getting the spotlight because time is definitely been the rebounding partner and getting the score there. So Toledo Clippers up 13 to nothing. Worcester Tides are going to have to dig deep right now. Yeah, to the to the dismay of many support players, there is no uh, regrab assist metric in the game yet. So you know maybe in the future we'll get something like that. But you know it, it, it's uh, hard to miss the you know the crucial ability to you know get that striker down to uh, where he needs to be. Um, right now, though, I mean, looking at the possession time, you know, uh, the the Tides actually have 60% of the game's current possession. So if they if the connections that they're making in in offense, they need to you know really work on making sure that they're moving that consistently into bubble. And you know, long shots like that on on Duke are, are just not going to work. Oh no! Ooh. Missing a, a, a delivery there, uh, but you're you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, you can't take you can't take threes uh, at this level like like that. Uh, yeah, Duke Tigarbs is gonna is gonna get that every time. That was a, a that was a pass to a regrabbing stack, just barely out of it. And this is what they need. Draco Mako. Oh, and just like that, the door was closed. Four players flying in for the for the Clippers, and ah, oh, Draco Mako can't quite get it. So uh, right now the Clippers are just absolutely everywhere. Speed is killing right now, and look at again. Oh, they just flew over it, but uh, that was another opportunity for the Clippers. So uh, yeah, I mean, Phenom, I don't know how you feel, but uh, I I do love me some stacking action. I do love me some speed. Uh, I just think it's beautiful to see these players flying so quickly, and right now the Clippers are putting on a show. I mean, when we played uh, on Wednesday night against them, you know that was a big thing in my mind, is just trying to prevent that stack. And and I think one of the one of the big things that you know causes that stack right now is is the turnover. You know, the second that you lose possession of that, it's it's you know a sign to them that they just clear and boost it. So the ability to 
you know, not give up the disc, you know, obviously the, you know, the turnover style, but really just making sure that every time you control the disc, that not only are you split up as possible, but you're forcing them to be as split up as possible to kind of even out that stack race. Ooh, and just like that, the stack is on. The stack is on. Bum, 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 bum. The stack is on. Breezebo. Uh -huh. Shooting in the wind. Absolutely letting it all hang out. Right now, the Clippers are getting everything that they want. That was three players to none in the bubble for the Clippers. I mean, they're just, they're just faster. Um, <clears throat> you know... When your stack is that much faster, uh, you're just getting everywhere. It, it sort of feels like you're just uh, kind of like a bigger kid on the playground. Um, that was a, that was a close shot. Everything right now just kind of going the way of the Clippers. Every time the tides even get uh, get a get a close uh, possibility, they either get stunned out or just barely miss a shot. And time has recollected. Uh, gonna get the gonna get together with Duke Tigers. They do lose their stack there though, so. Uh, not total perfection. Oh, oh, there was another opportunity just barely missed for the tides. That one not missed. Goran Jr. in the bubble going 1v3, and that will end the round. So, Worcester Tides getting beat up a little bit in round one, but with a little bit of a lift in the end of the round, we're going to go to commercial and be right back. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Honda. One man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Honda motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. This Wednesday, January 19th, the owners take over the arena and battle it out to see who can take home bragging rights. Followed by the Pro Series All-Star Match. Votes end at 11 p.m. Central tonight, so get your votes in now over at discord.gg forward slash NEPA. You can only catch those here on NEPA TV. For more information on the teams, follow NEPA TV on social media or visit nepavrpro.com. And as we get ready for the second quarter, so far it's been all Toledo Clippers, Tortoise and Time owning the arena with speed. Let's see what the Tides can do to try and slow the Tide and the onslaught the Clippers have brought so far. We'll send it back to Doc and Phenom in the booth. Well, uh, that's how you do it. Get your stack flying. That's the first offensive joust that was won uh, by the Tides. Uh, so they do have the disc right now, sending it over to Goran Jr. Goran Jr. going to operate in space, slowly moving up. Has a player on, on the bottom side, yes. Sends it over, looking for a pass maybe. Oh, Draco Miko, bottom, bottom pocket. So a little bit of a run here, Phenom. Uh, that's four unanswered points for the Tides. And um, they're looking a lot better at 16-6 to six than they did at 16-2. to two. I mean, absolutely. It's you know, it might take them a second to uh, you know play a team with this specific of a play style. You know, this you know very spear fronted stack. You know, trying to figure out how to how to take it down, and hopefully, it takes them a quarter uh, to figure it out. The one thing I was noticing right off the bat there um, from Tides was on their offense. You know, they were pretty hesitant to get into the bubble, and now as we can see, we have you know many players inside the bubble. So hopefully, they'll they'll connect with their offense a little more, and then just be able to stop that you know, uh, that orange stack each time flying past giving, you know, 10-15 seconds unanswered on the, on the defense. Oh my goodness! Goran Jr. with an absolute dime! Uh, nearly zero angle from the backside after some beautiful play by the Tides. Caravallo got a an ender move off that kept the, kept the play going, delivered it down to Draco, who delivered it over. Three beautiful passes in the bubble. And just like that, six unanswered points. Tides are up or down down rather only by eight. And they're putting up their their front stack is putting a lot of pressure 
on the offensive joust of the Clippers. Although, as they as I say that, uh, Breezebo working on the floor, and the Clippers have successfully moved through mid, looking to answer. No, Gordon Jr. says no, 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 no. And the stacks are out. Three players flying in. Tiny Thug is right there. Tiny Thug needs to get it. Absolutely, yes. Nice. On a run. Up or uh, back within six. And Technowub's in the chat saying, come on, Tides. Easy comeback. I don't know about easy, but they're definitely looking good. And uh, yeah, the offensive joust of the Clippers has not looked as uh, collected as their, as their defensive pressure. So uh, maybe that's the secret right now. Just don't let them score and keep the pressure on them. Um, just like that, though. Uh, yeah, well, Draco Mako does have the disc. That's a good clear. And the goal is open right there. Can you sling that from a long distance? Holy cow, Gordon Jr. from 27 meters out. War Worcester tied 11 unanswered points. And they are only down by three with five minutes left in the second quarter phenom i mean they're doing a good job they're spreading their their uh, mid play out quite a bit you know making it you know a stretch for that that stack to to kind of form uh looking at the stun stats here yeah 55 percent stuns going towards the uh the blue team uh to the tides so you know maybe they're, they're kind of taking that that throwing out that stack seriously and and uh, looks like you know even now there's a, a back stack on offense from the from the the clippers so i don't know if they're they're kind of taking uh advantage of their their quick speed and assuming that that's all it's going to need but you know after 11 unanswered points you know, your your uh, your spears looking a little dull yeah ab absolutely although uh, they're they're flying around right now uh, and the back sack is flying up time going to try and deliver it but it bounces off off the uh, off the geo there that bow tie so they will have to reset um, and just like that I mean yeah tortoise had an opportunity in the bubble uh, made, made a little stop move using the the brakes there and did juke one uh, but got stunned out by another so that was an opportunity missed um, and the tides you know they're they're not giving up they know what's on the line uh, this is win or go home. This is this is this is win or go home. Which oh, Duke Tiger no. Parallel says no. So the the defense for the Tides is really keeping them in the game. Remember, uh, there's finals on the line. So all all of these players are gonna be fighting until the absolute last gasp. Oh, Paravalo in the area. Rizbo in the area. Warren Jr. delivers again. We have a tie game, Phenom. I mean, it's it's fantastic defense. You know, the the fact that Gorin can move out that far and then for the rest of the team to come in clutch, give it right to him and take an you know open shot. I mean, they're playing that you know three back one forward, and you know obviously Gorin's on quite a heater right now. So if he keeps not missing those shots, they're just going to keep you know draining those those three pointers. So now electing to go a little bit more slowly. Clippers have got to be, uh, you know, they, they got to take a few breaths. They jumped out to such an early lead. And now the game is tied. So brand new game starting right now. And they're moving up, showing absolute poise. Time to Tortoise, Tortoise to Time. Time getting stunned out. Gorn Jr. in the area, backstack, flying through. Paravalo right there. Going to maybe shoot it. Oh, what a save by Tortoise and Co. I'm not sure who got a hand on it. Tortoise was in the area. There were another couple players uh, in the area as well. Couple players overshooting this one. Disc is floating free for a good long while. Goran Jr. going to collect it. Passes it over. That's a shot. Oh, just going to be a bit wide. Tough angle from a long distance. Goal is still open for three. And that delivery is good. Goran Jr. Nine points in a row for Goran Jr. themselves, three big time threes, and chat, the tides are up. Yeah, Draco's doing really good work in the backfield there, making sure that the stacks just do not exist. I mean, there was, you know, three or four of the, uh, of the orange side just sitting back on, on blue, unable to move, just stunned out that entire play. So, you know, they're, they've changed up their game and they're, they're really trying to be aggressive to, uh, to break up those stacks. And it's, I mean, it's working for them. 
It absolutely is. Uh, time delivering it over to Tortoise now. Tortoise floating in space. Tortoise gonna go uh, with a, a little bit of juking. Buying time. Oh, Tortoise. Keeping the eyes open. Looking for passes at the same time. Keeping the eye on the prize, which is that big square net. Delivers the round peg into the square and brings the Clippers back with him one. That was that's the first goal that the Clippers have had since about a minute and a half left in round one. So the whole was, quarter. Just about to say that. That is the first time that they have scored this quarter. Yeah, the first time they scored this quarter. Absolutely. Uh, so it's been a big time scoring drought. Uh, and uh, Duke Tigard's now is going to deliver it up in the area. No time. Tortoise. 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 21 to 19. And just like that, Clippers have regained the lead as we go into halftime. I think there may be, how much time are we going to have left? We're going to have about five seconds left. So uh, barring a miracle, uh, this game is going to end 20, or this round rather, and this half, going to end 21 to 19. Although, oh no, oh no. Whoa, dodging a bullet there are the tides. Hold your horses. Do not go anywhere. Take a deep breath, though. We'll be right back. Play game time playlist. There are those that show up to the game. There are those that change it forever. that achieved the unthinkable to move the world forward. And sometimes in directions we never thought possible. Introducing the world's first all-electric super truck, the GMC Hummer EV pickup. Come and compete with the pros March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. This one-of-a-kind event is supporting the Special Olympics and hosted at Bush Stadium's exclusive Redbird Club. With multiple brackets, side activities, and more, this will be the LAN event of 2022. Go to NEPAVRPro.com for more information. And now let's take a look at some highlights from the previous week. Five, four, three, two, one. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got this far, don't know how. Oh my 
goodness, what is going on? What are y'all doing, man? Come on. Welcome back. What a half. The tortoise show that was the first quarter turned into the Gorin show that was the second quarter. After much back and forth, we find ourselves with a two points match going into the second half. Semifinals, win or go home for both of these teams. Doc Education, Phenom, what great action we're seeing so far tonight. What did you see in the first half and what do you expect to see coming into the second? I mean, we, we, we talked about the, the entire first half. You know, the, the stack speed. Um, you know, so we're thankfully we were able to see the uh, the tides kind of be able to systematically break down that stack throughout the second round. Um, you know, it was it was sixteen to four after the first round, twenty one to nineteen. Um, so the uh, the tides were able to score fifteen points, I believe, unanswered during that second round, whereas the uh, uh, the Clippers scored five. Oh, so, you know, 16 to, to four the first round, five to 15 the second round. You know, we were just talking about how in uh, in the normal, you know, best out of three format, we would have seen that as, you know, 15 and five and five and 15 or, you know, very close to it. Whereas this, you know, being Echo and being very streaky, we're looking to see, you know, you know, a very even match across the board. So it, this is the quarter for, for someone to, you know, take control of the of the rest of the game. Yeah, taking a look at the stats after Tortoise popped off in the first quarter, who would have thought we would have gone seven minutes into the second quarter before we saw the first point out of the Toledo Clippers? They were able to answer there at the end of the half, so they're going into the second half with that two-point lead. Very precarious, though, because the Tides have certainly found their groove. Let's get right back to the action. Okay, well, action there is indeed. Winning the joust again, the Worcester Tides. Worcester, somebody's got to correct me. Draco may go with the disc. Flying in, delivering it over to the right side. Thug back to Draco. Oh, was trying to deliver it to Gorin, but uh, just a little bit off. Bounced off the shield instead, and now we got a stack race. Let's see who can get there first. It's going to be the Clippers. Bounces off somebody's head or Geo. I didn't actually quite, quite gather. I think it was off the Geo there. Uh, but time on the backside gonna be there. Beautiful back pass. Tortoise gonna reset over to time. Time over to Breezebo. Uh, just a little bit off though. Breezebo does recollect. Now to Tortoise. Time on the pillar. Time. 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 Good old top pocket time there. Top pocket time indeed. So after the absolute onslaught of points uh, with mostly with speed and re-grabbing, right there, Phenom showing off, uh, the Clippers showing off some nice back passing and disc, uh, disc management. I mean, that's kind of one of the very first times we've even seen them set up an offense. Most of the, the initial points we saw from Tortoise were on open goals from, you know, near half court. So, you know, this is the first time we've really been able to see the, the Clippers set up on offense to see what they're going to do. <laughs> and setting up on offense right there were the Tides. Some really nice flowing movement, getting the disc down low, and then passing to a couple of different cutters, causing chaos in the bubble, and answering right back. So it looks like uh, it looks like you know both of these teams are punching right now. Two point lead for the Clippers. They're gonna open with two on the uh, on the low side, one on the high side. Breezebo is up on the cloud. They've got options left and right in the tubes. Time trying to push through. Tortoise on the other side. Time under pressure now delivers over to the right side. Tortoise. Tortoise going to pass back to Breezebo. So some really nice uh, uh, passing under pressure or like, yeah, ca uh, calm confidence right here. Looks like they're coming out all Tortoise. Finds a bottom pocket. So Clipper clearly had a bit of a reset at the halftime and decided that they want to they want to win this under under um yeah but we're under control here so offensive joust now for the tides draco mako with the disc lives to the right side it's going to be paravalo sending it over to the left side now uh so really nice management here for the tides we're seeing absolute master class from both teams Tide thug scoring right back so I think 
uh, there have been no defensive stops in this round. It has just been punch for punch for punch. Yeah, they are super aggressive on their on their mid plays so far. Not a lot a lot of uh, man type uh, uh, defense on on the mid, which ends up with kind of a two v two in the bubble a lot of times instead of uh, setting up very quickly. You know, as they're just kind of constantly fighting each other. Kind of probably a backlash from you know the the way that the tides are not playing due to those stacks. I mean, they're kind of pulling them into their into their you know stronger position outside of the you know almost the two the two stack meta into a kind of a, a 1v1 on all four sides so you know obviously they're they're striving on that they've, they've pulled the uh the man i'm really bad with the the team names is the uh clippers even though they're orange too on the thing the clippers uh, you know are are really good at keeping that stack mobile but the tides have kind of brought them into their home court advantage of not allowing them to let that stack do what it needs to do and that that's the only way you can deal with uh with a stack right now running a two stack meta as well are the tides uh adding some pressure toward us floating in the mid getting stunned out tiny thug is right there the back stack is not collected though the front stack gets back together all oh, that duke tigarbs is right where they needed to be. Tortoise now delivers it over. Beautiful work. Tortoise and Time uh, have a really nice connection. They they know where each other are, and they really play a great two-player game. Showing off right there. Tortoise to Time to Tortoise to Time. That's how that play went with Duke Tigard sending it to Tortoise to kick it off. Time delivering it back and delivering the, the lead back for the Clippers, they are back up by two in this back-to-back -back game. I mean, I think that's kind of goes unnoticed is the the ability for the Clippers right now is their positioning. Their positioning is fantastic. I mean, uh, a lot of the the newer Echo players, you know, they notice a lot of times that you know passing is not easy. Um, but the passing is not easy because the positions that you you know you're you're putting yourself in make it harder. So a lot of times we see these teams, you know, these high-level teams just making pass after pass after pass. It's not because they're very good at passing. It's because they're very good at being open for a pass and making that pass as easy as possible. And right now, that is exactly what the Clippers are doing. You know, when they move up the field, they're doing it cleanly and appropriately and not under pressure. So, you know, that the double stack meta that the the Tides is kind of running right now um, is seemingly not fast enough to kind of keep up with that that ability. So, you know, trying to switch it back to what they were you know, succeeding with in that man type defense is, is I think. The, the move for them right now. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's definitely working out. Draco now clearing it through. Maybe trying to pass there, or maybe maybe trying to Kung shot, but it bounces right back to time. Time over on the left side. It's going to be the Tortoise. Tortoise trying to pass back to time, but not connected to a Geode, and uh, getting stunned out there. There's a little bit of a fight. Tortoise does recollect, though, win it, and tap it back to time for the reset. Delivering is it in. Oh, Duke Tiger Arms. Wow. Beautiful jukes. But has to bounce uh, back. And Tortoise re recollects the time. So, again, Clippers showing some uh, some speed, but also some management here. Tortoise not able to collect that one. And Goran Jr. is going to send it back. But time is right there. They have the disc again. Clippers with another opportunity. Going to pass over. It's going to be Tortoise. Two players, Duke and, and uh, oh, Duke and Breeze were causing a lot of chaos in the bubble, forcing the defense to be right there, and then time just slipped unnoticed and got the beautiful delivery, finishing it up and bringing the lead back to four. Yeah, at the beginning of the, this round, it was just kind of punch for punch, like you were saying, and now it's it's really slowed down, as you know, I think you know the. The round winds down. They understand that they got to be a little more conservative with their with their efforts. So, you know, you're seeing you know the Clippers and the Tides kind of take their take their time a little bit more than uh, than they have been in the past. Oh, oh no! Holy cow! That was an incredible save, and then almost a huge flub as the attempted clear went right off the shield and almost back into the goal. Able to clear it out though but the Clippers do get it back in hand and they are showing that disc management with the left, right, and even 
uh, happy to reset, sending it back. Although, uh, yeah, well, there he goes, finding the open player. Time, though, jumping it. Goran Jr., or Draco Mako, rather. That's got a chance! Oh, that would have been an absolute huge finish. But we're going to round four, the final and deciding quarter, 29 to 25. It's all on the line. Win or go home. Win and you're in the finals. Go home and, well, you know what that means. We'll be right back after this. This flag isn't backwards. It's facing this way because it's moving forward. Just like the men and women who wear it on their uniforms and the country it represents. They're all only meant to move one direction, which is why we fly it this way. On the flanks of the all new Grand Wagoneer, moving boldly and unstoppably forward. Friday nights at 9.30 p.m. Central. Be sure to check out Late Night with Ivan Thrive right here on Twitch. With fun games and exclusive interviews, we never know who will show up on Late Night VR. So join us at 9.30 p.m. Central right here at twitch.tv forward slash the NEPA TV at 9.30 p.m. Central. And just like the first match, we are going into the fourth quarter with a four-point game, close match. Goran, Tortoise, Time, everybody getting in on the action. Let's see what we've got for the fourth quarter. Back to Doc Education and Phanon. Okay, here we go. Tortoise and Time reconnecting with the win on that offensive joust. Duke Tigarbs over to Time. Time floating, finds the teammate Breezebo on the bottom side. Immediate points for the Clippers. They are crawling slowly creeping back up with their lead they have a, a, a lead of six and right now uh, i don't know fanon how do you feel it, it feels a little tenuous uh, i feel like there's a little bit of pressure on the ties right now yeah i mean you got to be able to pick that up you know throughout the game tortoise with 18 points goran with 17 points uh, so it's it's a dead heat between their you know two long shotters. So after that, it kind of just became a gruel. Any any point they really really had to work for as they uh, they warmed up and kind of found out how the other teams play. So you know right now we're waiting for you know again this brawling in the background that that you know is kind of unseen, the ability to you know stop that. But it's really going to be who connects with the goal on in the bubble this time. And it, oh and. Oh. A miss like that is is not what you want in the last quarter when you're down by six. It is absolutely not. This is the semifinals, and you are down by six. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ooh, just a little bit wide. That dodged a bullet there for the Tides. Uh, but, yeah, that was a, that was a big-time miss. It could be within four. So I uh, just got to keep, keep pick up, you know, not, not, not keep your head down. And that's what... Tiny Thug did there, off the head or the hand, not quite sure, something, some little piece, some little part of the garb of the Duke. And uh, back within four are the Tides. So let's see what the Clippers elect to do. They uh, send it down, oh, that's gonna be missed. Uh, although it might turn out to their advantage. The bounces found by Tortoise, Tortoise floating, Tortoise. Finds the back side, so uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of luck there uh, with that attempted pass, not quite connecting, but eventually finding Tortoise with an open goal. So yeah, very um, very aggressive play by the Tides and uh, the Clippers taking advantage. Yeah, as we know as uh, Echo players, sometimes the uh, joust advantage is not so advantage to have. So. Uh, really whoever kind of traps their opponents on that on that having to make plays after plays is, is really the the rut you see in at these uh, the fourth quarter matches is where they start to be you know more aggressive than they need to be or less aggressive than they need to be and they you know you, they change that up and kind of are unable to cope with the the change that quickly oh wow that clear going right into the hands of a player from the clippers and they cleared it right through so uh, six points lead, uh, still plenty of time 
Uh, although definitely the pressure is increasing. Backline player there, uh, Duke Tigard is going to pick it up and attempt the clear. That clear is very good. Uh, going goes in, and now they have an they have an advantage. But oh, that back stack for the tides. Oh no, Duke Tigard creeping up. That was huge. Bainham, wow. I mean, that 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 looked like it was going to be a stop, and uh, that it turned into a three, and now it's a nine-point lead for the Clippers. Yeah, it seems that that's kind of been the uh, the new Toledo strategy on offense is to really have someone up in the face of, uh, of Paravalo, which, I mean, is a good strategy with how good of a goalie he is. So, you know, being able to, to drain a, a, a well-timed three-pointer there is is might be enough to just kind of give them the the time that they need for the other team to uh, uh, lucky grab there by Draco. But uh, yeah, you know, they really need to, to capitalize on every single possession for the rest of the three and a half-ish minutes. That's a good way to do it. Oh. Wow, that was a bounce with a capital B. Goran Jr. absolutely capitalizing on that opportunity. I mean, there that was basically no opportunity and just finding that very, very difficult angle. Uh, back within six, absolutely a huge play. The difference between nine and six is is quite a lot, especially in terms of how you're feeling about it. Um, so right now, the uh, the Tides just got to keep it up, and that's what they need to do. They got the stop, although it does float right into the hand of Breezebow. Breezebow, over to time, time, over the right side, Tortoise, all oh, with a slapper, no, just off the ding ring, and that's going to bounce back to Breezebow, although immediately under pressure, can send out by Gorin, and they will reset here. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, they're they're seemingly having uh, Duke Tigard stay behind the midline. I don't know if it's a, a safety thing just to try not to take any threes, but they're they're becoming really, ooh, really unsuccessful at, at getting that disc into the bubble with that three before. I'm not sure that's the the smartest idea to be playing safe with uh, with only a six point lead. Yeah, and now it's a four point lead, and with two and a half minutes left, I mean that's an eternity in Echo. Uh, you, you could score about eight or ten points in two and a half minutes. So um, uh, we'll see if they elect to keep that same strategy. Roll out, right side, two players, left side, one. Passes over to time, time. Moving up, not under pressure, but the back sack is coming. Delivers over, over to Tortoise, Tortoise, making some jukes. Beautiful moves by Tortoise, but Goran Jr. able to get the stun out. This is the pressure that they need. Time though, in the right uh, location. Two minutes left. Four point lead, winner goes to the finals, loser goes home. All the pressure is on. Goran Jr. in the area. Can they get it? Draco Mako flicking it through. It's going to be all over onto the orange side of the arena. It's going to be Draco Mako getting stunned out by time, getting stolen, but right back in the hands, back and forth. The disc goes. Time with the shot. Oh, Tortoise collecting. Tortoise. Every time they've needed him, Tortoise has been there, Fainan. Yeah, they needed that big time. I mean, with the uh, the way they're kind of playing, I was talking about changing up your style. Having you know Duke sit that far back, he's not really in the in the play. He's just there as kind of a safety net. So they're they're really uh, assuming that the other three can take on the entire uh, Tides offense there. So it's 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 a it's definitely a risky play, uh, but uh, they seem to be be able to capitalize it. And with with a minute left here and six points, I mean this this could still go either way. Absolutely. Caravallo in the area under a little bit of pressure. Uh, tries to deliver over to Tiny Thug, but uh, unconnected to Geo, and uh, they got lucky there. They do have it under control now. Goran Jr., I don't know if that was a shot, but that was bold, no matter whether it was a shot or a pass. Takes a lucky bounce. Yeah, and Draco attempted to stun out the goalie there, and uh, the goalie actually won. I think Duke won the 1v1 and was able to save that shot last second. That, I mean, that, that shows you sometimes it's about strategy. Sometimes it's just about a player being just a little bit better in that moment. Although right here, the Tides have a chance. Draco Mako has, a, has an opportunity, delivers it down to Paravalo. Paravalo pushing it back. Oh, no. Wow. That was big. That was probably the last chance. Six-point lead, 11 seconds. Time is winding down. And just like that, no Clippers will go to the finals to face the Memphis Sounds in the first ever NEPA AAA Finals.
and what a match it was. What great action we have seen tonight. The finals are set. If you're keeping score at home, number one seeds are winless tonight. That's right. Number two seeds from both sides of the AAA brackets going to the finals as the Toledo Clippers walk away with this one. And earlier we saw the Memphis Sounds take down the Omaha Cubs. Exciting match, guys. Came down to the final seconds. What did you think throughout the game? The momentum swung multiple times at the end of the day. The Clippers are able to get it done. Yeah, I mean, it was we we talked about it a lot, and I was watching the uh, the percentage stats here the whole game, and uh, noticing is that the the saves fourteen to the Clippers, nine to the Tides was pretty even the whole game until that last uh, quarter and a half. Um, Duke sitting with eight saves, fourteen total on his team. Paravalo with with five saves. Um, so the 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 bubble defense, you know, of that uh, kind of punch for punch that they were they were looking for. Uh, you know, they really started focusing up on on defense. And I think that's where we started seeing a lot of the, the goalie punching technique was that, you know, these two goalies were doing so much work for their teams that, you know, kind of had to take them out of the out of the moment. Doc, you know the drill. Fain, I'm your new, so I'll give you a second to think. We always like to give a player of the game award. Doc, who did, really stood out to you as the Clippers walked away with this one? Well, I... I mean, I gotta, I gotta give it to Tortoise. Um, really kicked it off and uh, got the game started for the Clippers in the in the right in the right way. Um, and just re grabbing and and able to get some big time goals at the end there. I mean, that that one that last recollection off the off the ding for the for the score. Uh, you know, just uh, really really showed a lot of skill, especially with the re grabbing and just being in the right place at the right time. I, I think I'm do you agree? It. I, I, it, it's a toss up. You know, Tortoise has 22 points, four saves. Uh, Gorin has uh, 22 points, uh, uh, two assists. And uh, but I'm 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 really looking at 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 time. Uh, eight points that that game, six assists, three saves. Um, and for for him, uh, specifically knowing him, he does not stun very much at all, and he had nearly 30 stuns. Uh, during that game so i'm gonna say time just because of the the amount of times that tortoise had an open goal were either to you know from regrabs or passes from time nearly that entire game so i think time really from the back end facilitated you know the victory that the, the clippers saw well welcome to the team fain i'm you're gonna throw me under the bus and make me be the deciding vote on the first time out fair enough time you played great goran jr if your team had won, it would have been hands down yours to win. I'm going to go back to Tortoise, though. You're right. He don't think he would have scored them all if it wasn't for him. But the way that Tortoise and Time came out in that first quarter and built the lead, that proved something they needed going into the fourth quarter. If they hadn't had such a good first quarter going up by 12 points after the first, they never would have been able to hang on as the Tides were able to work their way back into this thing. And later in the game, in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, when the Tides were getting that momentum going, I think it was the timing of Tortoise's shots there in the second half that really made the difference and kind of slowed things down when he absolutely had it. So I'm going to decide to vote and go with Tortoise. Getting everything that you're putting down, though, Fane, on time, played a great game as well, and those two stacks are about as good as I've seen all season long. Both of the matches lived up to the billing. Cannot wait to see this final. Folks, do not go far. We are only halfway through tonight's action, and it only gets better from here. That's right. The very first NEPA Pro Series semifinals are coming your way. We will be kicking things off here in just a few minutes as the Denver Raptors take on the number one seed, Echo Club, Kansas City. Expect more of the same and even better in just under four minutes. Do not go far. Charge your glass and come back for more great Echo action right here on NEPA TV.
Welcome back, Echo Units and NEPA fans. What a great night of action we've had so far. We have settled the AAA Finals matchup, and unfortunately, two teams have seen their seasons come to an end. Next up for you is our first ever. We've got the Denver Raptors coming in against Echo Club Kansas City in our first matchup of the night. I'm joined by Doc Education and Phenom to bring you this great match. Gentlemen, my heart's going. We saw two great AAA matches. Now we get to the nitty-gritty of the Pro Series. What do we expect to see going into this game between Denver and Kansas City? Hey. Oh, sorry. I was, on, I was still muted there. All right. So, I mean, this is going to be a fantastic game. Uh, I, the the Raptors are, are are very good at at playing defense, and the uh, uh, Echo Club Kansas City is very good at playing offense. So it's going to be kind of a, a clash in, in that way. Um, we're gonna. The thing I'm interested in seeing is how how well uh, Zach is going to be effective against the the defense setup of the of uh, uh, Echo Club Kansas City, uh, and just the, you know the ability for uh, Palador does a lot of the uh, the stunning within the bubble defense. So his ability to you know keep up with you know guys like Akil Stater and KFC who are very mechanically sound, uh, they are very difficult to to catch and stun a lot of the times. So we're going to be able to you know see some some player interactions here, specific player interactions that are going to you know be the the defining factor of this game. Yeah, and. Um... I mean, <clears throat> great breakdown uh, technically, and uh, I was, guess I'll just, you know, mention em emotionally, right? Um, it's a lot on the line right now. Uh, this is the very first NEPA playoffs, and these players, even though all almost all of them have some championship DNA in their blood, uh, or at least experience at the highest level and in kind of elimination uh, scenarios, you know, uh, their blood is going to be pumping. They are, they're, they're going to be feeling it. And there's going to be ups and downs for both teams in this games. There's going to be runs. Uh, there's going to be times when uh, one team gets gets going and, and the other team is going to have to uh, have to dig deep. So uh, that's where, you know, I mean, uh, obviously having a, a, a player like Palador who can, uh, who, who can calm you down or, you know, on the other side, obviously Oculus Hater, recent, recent champion, uh, you know the, those players uh, can can bring a lot of experience and uh, and add a lot to the uh, to the mix. Uh, I think as much as the technical aspects of this game are going to be important, so too are going to be those emotions at those key moments. Yeah, it's going to come down to you know the players on these teams. It's you know whoever realistically shows up today is going to walk out you know going into the into the finals. I, I don't think it's a, a given on on either team uh, uh, who's going to win which uh, is a, a fantastic thing to go into in a game like this when it, when it matters that much is to not be, okay, well, you know, we're just here to show up and see a team win. At any point at you know in this game, we could see a, a team take the lead or lose the lead. Right, you know, so it's going to be, who, who, oh, yeah. if they've shown up and they're ready to play, and you know, I know uh, Echo Club Kansas City has been doing a lot of uh, other team reviews on you know changing their, their offensive and, and defensive style. Uh, Zach being such an aggressor on uh, on the Raptors, I have to imagine that they they're going to have some kind of counter strategy to kind of defend against him. Well, so far tonight in our two AAA semifinals, we've seen the number one seeds down. It's been a team coming out of the quarterfinal matches on Wednesday night that won both of those matches. Denver Raptors had a close one with the Florida Laser Sharks. They were able to come back narrowly escape with a victory to earn their way into this game. Let's see if they can continue that momentum here. Echo Club Kansas City, meanwhile, had Wednesday night off. I'm sure they've been playing the scrims, but let's see what kind of momentum they can carry in to our first semifinal. Doc, Phenom, you've got it for the call. Let's get the action started. Here they come out of the tubes. Wit getting ahead on it first. Zach in the area, Palador in the area, Perrinim in the area, Palador with the flick back to Wit. Wit with the flick over the Frisbee, going side to side. Zach going to be picking it up, and now they finally have it under control. Uh, uh, Wit going to deliver it down. It's going to be under control. Palace 
Raptors, known for their intelligence and their ability to control the disc. And here they're showing it off, moving it up slowly. Oh, sweet tooth with a save. What a stop there after an absolutely beautifully managed offensive uh, uh, possession from the Raptors. An amazing save from Sweet Tooth. That's a shot. Oh, a little bit wide in the area. Palador. Oh, another save from Sweet Tooth. So two big time saves early days. Uh, that is, that's, I mean, that's huge for the scoreboard. It's huge for the momentum and definitely maybe going to be getting in the heads a little bit of the Raptors paint on. Palace with the disc. Palador cutting, Zach cutting. Oh, I don't know if Sweet Tooth got a hand on it. The disc turned blue. So somebody got a hand on it. Uh, early days. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh. I thought that had a chance. It was just a little bit wide. And it's gonna be Oculusator picking up the disc for the first time. It's gonna be offensive joust or offensive movement, uh, but Palace is gonna pick it up and sending it over to the other side. So two minutes gone by, no one has scored just yet. So amazing defensive stops and some near misses early. I've seen a lot of clear, you know, the clear and boost strategy from these very aggressive teams, but the second they clear it, they start fighting, or you know, the stacks uh, have made near misses. So it's just it's just a a constant turnover right now, uh, waiting for you know somebody to kind of take the initiative and 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 take that momentum swing. You know, having uh, looks like we're having some troubles even clearing the disc right now from from both teams. So you know maybe some you know some warm ups, whether they elected to take a warm up scrim or not. You know, it, we just waiting for these these two teams to. They kind of show us what they're they're made out of and and uh, take some lead. Yeah, Zach calming everyone down has the disc on the backside, not under any pressure. Palador trying to do the same under a little bit of pressure from KFC, but now they've got their offense going. Palace moving over, creating spacing. They're really stretching the defense out. Uh, they are touching all corners of the arena right now, giving Palador space to operate. Oculus Hater came up, but Palador gets it right back. That disc is tapped out though now, and re-grabbing stack is there. That's gonna be a shot. Oh my goodness. Oculus from 33 meters out at 18 meters a second, an absolute strike to get the score going three minutes in. And it is Echo Club Kansas City up by three. Yeah, in the past we've seen, you know, Zach kind of come out and, and score a lot of of the historical points for Dunder Raptors. So, you know, seeing him on the back line and, and no players in the bubble, I mean, we can see why the the uh, Echo Club Kansas City is being so aggressive on their on their defense. You know, they can be as they're not being, you know, their bubble hasn't really been uh, penetrated mo much with the, the offensive, either stacking or positioning. KFC over the left side, back to Oculus. A little bit out of reach though, and it's gonna be, no, Wit can't handle it. The disc is in a dangerous spot. Uh, that is that clear is going to be good. So Denver Raptors dodging one there, flying through. Palace is in the area. Goal is open for the moment. Can they get it? Oh, wow! Sweet tooth and to re grab to it, got it just before it went in, but couldn't quite save it. Tapped it in, and that's the first score for the Raptors. And we got ourselves a game now, Phenom. Both of the seals have been cracked. The scoring is open. We got the first offensive joust of the evening for Echo Club Kansas City. Yeah, unfortunate to see a see a goal like that. Uh, as I'd say, that was a 50-50. Is uh, thankfully we haven't seen many of those tonight. Um, but you know, hopefully we can we can really see the control of of Echo Club Kansas City now as they're they're setting up a little more, and we do. Wow. Yeah, that first one was a real self goal. That one was perhaps a trip to a town in Illinois. But here we go. It is five to two, Echo Club, Kansas City. Second offensive rollout of the evening for the Raptors. Wit getting stunned out. KFC and Oculusator adding a lot of pressure. That is going to be uh, a bounce to Paranam. Paranam with the flick. Inside shot. 
And Echo Club Kansas City has got four unanswered points on a little bit of a run here. So this is the first little test of the Raptors, Phenom. I mean, nine total points in, in, you know, more than coming up on, you know, six full minutes here is is pretty unprecedented for for these kinds of matches. So we're, we're really looking at some very stellar defense from, from both teams. Absolutely. Although, oh, look at that, Zach, coming in just when needed, on time with the stun and the steal. That was huge. Every play in a game like this is absolutely huge. And look at that. Oh, just a little bit low. So uh, that that would have been that would have been a huge three pointer for the Raptors. Um, and now it's going to be an opportunity for Kansas City. Anytime you see, most of the time in Echo, when you see a disc floating by itself on one side, you can look at the other side and see a lot of fists flying. Yeah, there are a lot of fists flying for sure. A lot of saves. Oh, wow. Some absolute strikes for the Raptors just barely missing. Uh, so the game could, the, the score could be very, very different. Dodging some bullets are the Echo Club from Kansas City. Uh, some great defensive plays in goal and around goal for both teams early on that's kept the scoring low. Uh, but now it's going to be Zach W operating in space. Uh, no one's going to be there. And oh, Zach, oh, again, a near miss. So a lot of points left on the board for the Raptors. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, other other than that unfortunate uh, self goal, currently the, uh, the board is showing no points and no assists on the side of the Raptors. So uh, really need some some time to do just this and kind of penetrate an entire uh, an entire team into that bubble instead of just the the people that show up. Oh, that's a shot! Great regrab. Palace flings it out under pressure. It's going to turn into a great clear. Actually, this is low, and it's going to be picked up uh, by the by Kansas City. Uh, but they are going to uh, they're going to have to clear it, and they are going to lose it. So uh, four players all together for the Raptors. So. Everybody's feeling each other out. Uh, there are a lot of nerves, and the Raptors have left a lot of points on the board. Oh, Palace, an incredible save. That's got a chance. It's going to be deep into the bubble. Can any regrabbing stack get together? There they come. Palace off the backboard. Yes. Going to close round one with a score, and that was huge. Seven to four. First quarter score for you. In this semifinal matchup, we're going to go to commercial and be right back. This flag isn't backwards. It's facing this way because it's moving forward. Just like the men and women who wear it on their uniforms and the country it represents. They're all only meant to move one direction, which is why we fly it this way, on the flanks of the all-new Grand Wagoneer, moving boldly and unstoppably forward. This Wednesday, January 19th, the owners take over the arena and battle it out to see who can take home bragging rights. Followed by the Pro Series All-Star Match. Votes end at 11 p.m. Central tonight. Get out. Vote now. It's going to close. You can only catch these here on NEPA TV. For more information on the teams, follow NEPA TV on social media or visit NEPAVRPro.com. Gentlemen. Great night of matchups. Great first quarter. It's a single score game going into the second. But back to you. Bring us that action. Wow. Teams are going to come out. Let's see who wins the joust. But it has absolutely not disappointed early. It's going to be the Echo Club from Kansas City winning it. Oculusator. Top pocket. Ah. Three pointer to kick us off. Kansas City up by six. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, I mean, this is going to be a, a, a beast in offense versus a beast in defense. And I, I, Denver Raptors stacks that are looking faster this game than I think they have all season. So the, their speed on, on defense and in mid is, is just fantastic. But we just, you know, we need to see them really find their groove against the, against the Echo Club Kansas City. And, 
and uh, kind of connect on on some more open goals. Yeah, I think that's the key, the connection on the open goals. They have had opportunities. They've had close opportunities and they've had long ones and they oh, they haven't really been able to connect. Uh, obviously only four points on the board, uh, but you definitely expect more of those to go in as uh, you know, regression to the mean uh, on the on the on the 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 stats uh you know you you expect these you expect these players to make these shots and and that they will as the game continues so uh the fact that they're only down by six is actually um a pretty good uh pretty good for them given how how many points they have left on the board right there oh see there's not another another just very near miss for the raptors here and that's going to kick off a tap through uh, that had a chance but the player sweet tooth flying in that's a big time three. So, I mean, Thanon, that's a five point turnaround with that with that opportunity that the Raptors had turning into the three on the other side. Yeah, just looking at the uh, possession times, the Raptors have actually had 60% of the uh, possession time, uh, uh, four minutes compared to two and a half. So, you know, they they're 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 holding it. They're just not making that connection. I would say if anyone you know watching at home really focus on on offense of Raptors, but the pressure that Zach is, is kind of creating. He's He's been in the bubble the whole time, but I don't think he's he's had a, a free second to think during that entire time. I think it's really working out well for, for Echo Club Kansas City. It's just to, you know, to keep that you know very aggressive, very prolific offensive player you know, just kind of under wrap the entire time. We two flying in. Oh, Balador stole it absolutely in midair. A uh, little bit of a lucky bounce, although Oculusator will get a hand on it first. It looks like the Raptors will recollect Palador with the disc. Going to deliver it down low to Wit. Wit, looking for a, a pass. Palace. Palace over to Zach. Zach to Palador! What a cut, what a pass, what a finish. Every score right now is huge to the Raptors because uh, they haven't scored a lot. I mean, neither have Echo Club Kansas City. They're not running away with it. 13 points. Uh, about halfway through round two, uh, that that's uh, that's pretty good for keeping players like Oculus Eight or KFC Sweet Tooth from tearing in. I mean, uh, they, any one of those players can pop off at any minute. Uh, so, uh, good defense, you know, but better offense on that last play. KFC flying in, finding the pocket. KFC cannot allow a player like that to go unbothered that close to the goal. So Son of Wines in the chat. What's up, Wines? Already calling it rock. And the, and the Echo Club Kansas City. They got to get through the Raptors if they want to make it to the championship. And Wit and Co. Uh, are definitely trying to stop that right now. On the floor, Palace. Looking for a pass. Not under any pressure, though. Palador. Uh, looking for a pass there. Finds one. Zach! Can't lock down a player like Zach forever off the head of Sweet Tooth. And they are rolling now. I've already scored as many points as they did in the first quarter, halfway through the second. Yeah, their 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 defense keeps up, and their offense, you know, ticks it up a couple notches. They'll be back in this game in no time. And as far as uh, Echo Club Kansas City, they just need to uh, find a way through that that tight defense and let you know players like KFC and Oculusator really uh, uh, do their thing. And you know, Aaron and with her, her throwing style is really dangerous in that bubble, so they just need to really kind of set up. And each time they've set up a, uh, an offense like this, it's been it's been uh, a near given every time they, they set up. So as far as the Raptors goes, trying to not let that happen, to kind of keep them on the, the mid player or 2v2s, something where they can't change or they can't choose exactly who's going to be striking is going to be key. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was a bit of a stun out uh, by the by the Echo Club Kansas City that kept those defenders uh, in line uh, uh, for the Raptors. So uh, that's what allowed that uh, that score to happen. Delivers it in. It's going to be uh, Paranim in the area, but doesn't quite connect with it. Zach W. All trying to connect to the Cutting Palace, but just moving a bit too fast. Uh, on the backside, though, Wit is right there. Favorable bounce, uh, and it does bounce back into the hands of the Echo Club for a minute. KFC coming in with a headbutt to themselves wow kfc deserves an assist for that play if you didn't see it here it comes K 
EFC uh, headbutts it from the mid and then collects their own headbutt for the finish. That was a really beautiful play uh, with, with the headbutt and the finish. Wit now with the disc. Oculus Hater. Oh no. Oh no. And just like that, five quick points and Echo Club has their biggest lead of the game at 14. Yeah, this is exactly what uh, Raptors are, are, are not wanting in, in this situation. You know, to hold off uh, a heavy scoring team an entire quarter and almost almost all of this one and then to you know kind of lose it you know it, it it's it it's really difficult to to stop that kind of progression when you just have these players that are you know able to take these very long shots and you know hit on goalies a majority of the time so uh early test sweet tooth oh just dodging a bullet there uh, but right back in the hand, Sweet Tooth passing it over to KFC. KFC getting stunned out. This is absolutely crucial uh, that they not allow oh, a goal from Echo Club Kansas City, which is exactly what happened. Now 16. Now it's feel. I mean, 16 is definitely feeling like a big, a big lead, especially given that you've only scored eight. So it's really twice the the score that you have had in in two full rounds so when you're not scoring a lot uh a lead like 16 even with as much time as there is starts to feel like a lot more yeah going from seven and four four and seven i should say the to eight and 24 they have uh quadrupled their score from from the first round yeah so let's see how raptors are gonna respond look at that Zach W just very calmly says, hey, look, if you're not going to put a defender on me, I will put the disc in the goal. And they've got 10 more seconds once this timer goes down. So let's see if they can put a little bit of pressure, maybe score again. But even that little score is definitely huge. 14 feels a lot better than 16. Uh, and 10 feels a lot better than 8, 5, 4, 3. Can they get it? They've got an opportunity. Slings it in. Oh, Sweet Tooth was there. Round 2 is over. First half is over of this semifinal matchup between Echo Club Kansas City and the Denver Raptors. 24 to 10. Echo Club Kansas City is up. We're going to go to a commercial and be right back. Play game time playlist. There are those that show up to the game. There are those that change it forever. The ones that achieve the unthinkable to move the world forward. Sometimes in directions we never thought possible. Introducing the world's first all electric super truck, the GMC Hummer EV pickup. Come and compete with the pros March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. This one-of-a-kind event is supporting the Special Olympics and hosted at Bush Stadium's exclusive Redbird Club. With multiple brackets, side activities, and more, this will be the LAN event of 2022. Go to NEPAVRPro.com for more information. And now let's take a look at some highlights from the last week.
What? That, he hit the impossible shot! That was the impossible Guys, gotta outwork your opponents. Let's go. Three, two, one, fight. Ah. Oh, my goodness, what is going on? What are y'all doing, man? Come on! Welcome back to the Halftime Show. I'm joined by Doc Education at Phenom for tonight's call. Gentlemen, it has been an exciting match. So far, the scoring has been a bit one-sided, though. What'd you see in the first half, Phenom? I mean, it was close. That whole first quarter, it, you know, it was anyone's game. Uh, knowing you know, that uh, they were just waiting to, to to put their fangs down on the on the Echo Club Kansas City. So, you know, as far as the Raptors go, you know, we need to see them keep up exactly what they're doing on defense, but just connect on offense. You know, they've left they left a couple times. Uh Echo Club Kansas City really singling out Zach on the on the defense. Um so, you know, as far as Echo Club Kansas City, they just need to continue what they're doing. They'll figure out, you know, the the defense as they go and and you know staying on on zach and preventing them from scoring is exactly what they did so you know it's it's just kind of whether or not the raptors can can show up this next half and as we pull up the stats here denver raptors known for their defense particularly in the bubble but when they do well it's because zach w gets involved on the offensive end as well we saw him do that in the second quarter i think he walked away with three goals there in the second to keep them on the board to keep things close Let's see if he can keep any of that momentum going for the Denver Raptors as they try to crawl back in against the number one seed. And I'll say as a, as a goalie, in, in a long-term goalie in this game, the best goalie in this game is three good defenders. Yeah, and the Denver Raptors put three de three good defenders on the on the field or in the arena for the vast majority of of that game. Right, uh, it was just at the very end of round two that Echo Club Kansas City really started um, really started taking off. So let's see if Raptors can continue their defensive stops, and if some of these dings out can turn into dings in. That's not going to do it. Oculusator. With the flick, it's going to go down to the floor. And uh, luckily for the Raptors, they will pick it up, although that's going to be trapped in that uh, in that trap area. Sweet Tooth going to do some damage. And pass it to the backside, Oculusator. Oculusator back to Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth operating. Oh, wow. KFC had it, had it there. At, oh, clear not good. Paranim collects it. I was gonna say they uh, that was the that was the three good defenders they needed, but the clear uh, was not their friend, and up by 16 now, are Echo Club Kansas City. Yeah, against that uh, Echo Club Kansas City offense, it is you know it is, it, are, it is do or die. You know, defense is the hardest part of this game. So being able to do it and then uh, hand it right back to the people you just stopped is kind of worst case scenario for a lot of defense. Ooh, and that's not how you do it either. Losing the disc on the offensive joust. I mean, under a lot of pressure, Echo Club Kansas City really taking it to the Raptors right now. Kind of running away with it. And, um, you know, there's still plenty of time. But 19 points down, and you've only scored 10. So nearly, it's, it's nearly twice your, your point total. Uh, this feels like a very important uh, next little six minutes uh, to end this round here for the Raptors. With, with the disc, passes over to Zach. Zach, operating, Palace, yes. So let's hope that kicks off a run because whether you're a Raptors fan or a Kansas City fan, you have got to be rooting for a good game. And uh, so we're hoping, we're all hoping for a little run from right? Right, chat? 
let us know. A absolutely. If they can if they can keep uh, Echo Club Kansas City on mid and not let them set up on bubble and then just connect every possession they have, I mean, this is theirs to uh, to take back. So, Easier said than done. <laughs> absolutely, especially uh, with a team like uh, Echo Club Kansas City on the other side, Sweet Tooth with the disc juking. KFC with the disc has an open player on the right side floor. Uh, Going to deliver it to the high side instead, Oculus Aider. Paranim cutting down, uh, causing a lot of uh, chaos uh, uh, for herself. Low. Um, KFC now, so they've got them fully spread out. KFC, oh my goodness. Well, not quite sure what happened there. Left the goal open way too long, and that's a big time three. Up by 20 now, Kansas City. That's the risk of being a, a super aggressive offense. Sometimes you just let that, that one moment slide by, and with these players, especially KFC and Oculus Hater and, and Sweet Tooth and Paradigm, I believe all on CV1, you know, the, the long shots are, are, are kind of uh, a given for most of these players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was, a, that was almost a gimme for KFC. Palace with the disc, back to Palador, down to the left, right side, Wit over to Palace again. Oh, but they were just a little too close. One player pairing him, able to do defense on both. So they will have to reset and attempt to re-stretch out the defense. Uh, the re-grabbing stack from KFC and Oculus Aid are causing some uh, problems, but uh, the Raptors are moving it up slowly. Oh, Zach, not able to hang on to it. And all of those great passes are for naught. It's going to be Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth will take a shot, absolutely. Yeah, there again on the offense, we saw, you know, I think it was Wit with the disc and and only Zach inside the bubble. So we had, you know, both Palador and uh, a Palace sitting behind the disc, hoping that, you know, Zach can, can pull something off. They really need to uh, start, you know, relying less on Zach because the, the, the uh, Echo Club Kansas City is, is really aware of that. And they're, they're just kind of, you know, making devastating progress against their offense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Palador now with the disc, and uh, I mean, one of the one of the downsides, uh, or the I guess the the risks of a of a controlled offense is, you know, you can make five or six great passes, and then you just miss one, and you're and you lose you lose all the traction that you had, and that's happened to the Denver Raptors quite a few times in this game. Let's see if they can make that shot. Yes. Palace, not out of it yet. Three minutes left in this round. Let's see how close they can get, if they can crawl back, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work if the Raptors are gonna get back in this game. Yeah, I mean, it, we're in postseason, so we're you know we're not too concerned about point differential or anything like that. It is it is win or lose in this situation, and and being in the in the second half, almost into the fourth quarter, twenty points down, uh, is is gonna be a, is a tough look on the. Uh, the Denver Raptors right now. Yeah, Palador with the flick, but there's no re-grabbing stack for the Raptors. And uh, the Echo Club Kansas City is just uh, too, in too many places with their with the stacks that they have. Oculus Aider doing work. Oculus Aider on the floor. Oculus Aider. 22 points up. Echo Club Kansas City. Oof. Breather after that one. Raptors. Just having, oh, a little bit of miscommunication there. And um, that's not what you want, Oculus Hater. Oh, dodging a final bullet. But, I mean, Echo Club Kansas City have just shown, I mean, they're, they're, they're looking really, really good right now. <laughs> KFC. Reaching through the goal, stealing the goal from the teammate Oculus Aider. So Oculus Aider gets the assist, uh, but it's still two points on the board for Echo Club Kansas City. <laughs> and they are doing work every player with, with two or more assists. We have KFC Oculus Aider with, you know, 12 and 13 points, Sweet Tooth, pairing him with six each. So all of these players are doing work on offense. You know, they're just able to, you know, kind of systematically, you know, uh, work the the Denver Raptors offense probably you know, focusing a little bit more on on trying to, to be more aggressive with the with the time that they have left kind of opening more doors than uh, we saw the first round 
Yeah, KFC feeling it. Feeling it, flexing after that goal, just flying in with too much space to operate. I think the Raptors were ready to be on their offense on that one. And uh, uh, that that missed clear from Zach W, it, it just found the, the wrong hand. And uh, yeah, 42 to 15 right now, Raptors with the uh, Zach W over the left side, Palace on the floor. Palace moving up. Uh, KFC and Ock are in a stack as usual. Uh, Zach, maybe a little bit of show off, maybe a little bit of this game is over, but able to find that top pocket and, uh, you know, keep the scoring going. A little bit of, little bit of jazz, a little bit of sparkles for the fans. Pretty smooth moves. That was fun to watch. But the round three is over, and Echo Club Kansas City is firmly in hand with this one. We're going to go to a commercial and be right back. Friday nights at 9.30 p.m. Central, be sure to check out Late Night with Ivan Thrive right here on Twitch. With fun games and exclusive interviews, we never know who will show up on Late Night VR. So join us at 9.30 p.m. Central right here at twitch.tv forward slash the NEPA TV at 9.30 p.m. Central. If you didn't catch this week's episode with Reggie, make sure you tune in and check that one out as well. Well, gentlemen, game seems firmly in hand. Echo Club Kansas City showed up. Denver Raptors are going to do their best with the last eight minutes to crawl back into it, but known for their defense, let's see if they can generate any offense to try and make their way back in. It's a very, very high mountain to climb. Yeah, 25 okay. points down. Uh, and, I mean, paying on, like, what, what do you do as a player when you're down by that much uh, with this little time left? I mean, it's it's tough when, you know, even as a captain, you have to, you know, look at the scoreboard and the time you have left and be like, hey, guys, we have eight minutes to double our score and then we still lose. So, you know, it's 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 tough, you know, as as a player. But, you know, we, we've all been playing this game a long time. We know, you know, this situation well. So it's it's just got to, you got to, you know, kind of steal yourself and tell you, you know, okay, well, then now it's just. I'm not sure that was intentional or he just fell into the goal there. I think uh, I think KFC is having some fun, and uh, you know why not? I mean, uh, you know, this game, the game, the game is a game, and the game is for fun. So, uh, you know, uh, Oculus Aider gonna take a flick. Oculus Aider gonna take a flick. KFC gonna take a flick. KFC. Hey, still one flick. point in the positive, at least. I, I that, was, that was good. 45 to 19. So, uh, air has been sucked out of this one just a little bit, but the players will keep it up. And, uh, I mean, fans, you know, there, there's still going to be some good, uh, some good fun to be had. Palace to wit, wit, floating over. He's going to send it back to Palace. Palace can go one on one against Sweet Tooth. Let's see what they do. Okay, easy breezy, beautiful, two points. Offensive joust, Echo Club, KFC, Geo, flying in. Palace, 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 Oculusator. Over to Zach, re-grabbing stack. Palador and, and Wit are together. Palador with the disc. Going to pass it over to Wit. Wit going to flex and send it in. So, uh, six points uh, for the Raptors in the last couple of minutes here. Uh, they are not giving up. 
uh, they are gonna they're gonna keep rolling. Uh, and um, yeah, Echo Club Kansas City now on their offensive joust. Okay, okay. Echo Club Kansas City, pass it over to the right side, Paranim. Paranim gonna float, gonna maybe take a pass, maybe make a shot. I'm not quite sure where that was connected, but Palador and Palace, the Devil Bees, are doing their re-grabbing thing. Palace gonna pass it over to Zach. Zach, back to Palace. Palace, back to Wit. Wit, back to Palador. Palador, over to Pal over to Zach. Zach, Sweet Tooth says no. Palace says, hey, maybe. Ding Ring says no. Zach says maybe. Sweet Two says no. Wit. Wit the disc back. Sends it over to Zach. Finally. Sweet Two can't stop them all. Some great stops by Sweet Tooth in the goal. Uh, but Zach ultimately fighting that bottom pocket. It's 25 to 45 with about four minutes left. Sweet Tooth currently with seven saves after that interaction. Sweet Tooth is absolutely cracked in so many ways. Uh, really underrated goalie. Um, you know, well well known for the re-grabbing, especially with Chaco Lit has some has some records. Uh, the two of them do, and uh, they they're really able to stay together. Uh, you know, moving side to side in the defensive stack really beautifully. Uh, but kind of an underrated goalie. Oh, Wit, Wit, not giving it up. So. Back within 17. And yep, Echo Club, Kansas City feeling a little too comfortable all of a sudden here. You know, uh, Wines saying uh, Sweet is the best all-around player. I mean, you know, yeah. Let, let's have a conversation in the chat, Sweet Tooth. Passing over to Oculusator. Ock down to Paranem. Paranem with the open goal. A little bit wide right. And Palador is in the area. Oculusator. Oculus Gonna recollect. Sweet Tooth going to the backside. Palador kind of trying to make some defensive uh, pressure on Oculus Aider, but not wanting to go too far out. KFC trying to bounce it off the, the pyramid there on the backside, but it'll be paired and picking it back up to Palace. It's a lot of pup 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 puppy names in this game, uh, but uh, 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 Oculus Aider is gonna hold it, and uh, that's gonna but 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 bounce. Over into the hands of P P P P Paranim to KFC. Over to Ock. Ock. Styling. Ock. Dancing. Ock. In the bubble. Ock. Biden. A score. As the game winds down, players are having a little bit of fun, but still competing, still uh, putting pressure on each other. And uh, that was some beautiful moves in the bubble by Oculus Hater. Now we're seeing the kind of uh, the true nature of even, especially KFC Inoculus Skater, you know, being even more dangerous when they're you know more carefree than, you know, when they're uh, they're going full sweat in uh, in matches. So you know, this is gonna be, if not more dangerous for the the Raptors to uh, to put this kind of mindset on uh, those kinds of players. Absolutely. Oh, Oculus Skater. Oh, oh. Oh, a couple of fakes uh, off the ding ring low. Oh, that's a bad bounce. And it's going to be pairing him with the disc again. Pairing him will, I guess, wisely reset. Uh, no no need to press here. Uh, up by 19 with a minute 40 left. Sweet Tooth with the disc, passing it over to pairing him. Pairing him to Ock. Ock. So, I mean, still still showing us how it's done, Thane on. That, that was some nice passing there. I mean, uh, they have some of the best offense in the entire league. So watching them, you know, have kind of immaculate control over the disc like that, and then just surgically place it inside the bubble when they need to is exactly what they've done the entire series. Okay, okay. Raptors, moving it up. One minute left for your season. Showing the fans a good time, you know they're not sitting on their hands. They, they they could be they could be phoning it in, but they are continuing to battle. Zach W on the ceiling wasn't able to quite get it. Sweet Tooth with the attempted clear, but it bounces off the cloud. Uh, KFC gonna pick it up. Palador never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. That is my man Palador. And uh, getting stuff though. Uh, that's gonna be Oculusator. Ocula delivering 28 to 52. That might be the final score. 
as the clock winds down, no need to call the rest. We can just thank both of these teams. It's been a great season to watch the Denver Raptors, their evolution. Great to see Palador back in the arena. Looking for beautiful things from him and the Raptors, uh, in, you know, as, as the next season progresses and uh, however NEPA uh, unfolds and continues. Uh, and uh, But right now, all credit goes to Echo Club Kansas City. They are your winners. They are going to the finals to face the winner of our next match, the Orlando Cyclones against the, help me out. Kings. The Kings, of course. The New York Kings. So uh, congratulations. Awesome. Hey, thank you for pairing him. And as we take a look at the stats here, great match, exciting play. Hats off to the professionalism of the Denver Raptors. They continued to play on into the fourth quarter when things were well out of hand, but there was just too much Echo Club Kansas City coming at them tonight. Gentlemen, we've got to choose a player of the game. A lot of great play tonight. It's not going to be easy. Who did you like in tonight's matchup? Uh, I mean, I think... Hopefully we, I mean, I guess this is probably the, the constant of, uh, of this segment, but hopefully I think we all believe in the same MVP this round, but uh, my particular vote is, is gotta be for, for KFC. He was the one who kind of uh, took the lead there, even though Oculus Sator ended up with uh, two more points. Uh, a lot of Oculus Sator's point came uh, late game uh, when he was very confident in, in their victory. But I think it was KFC that, you know, really put the, uh, the, the uh, nails in the coffin uh, during those uh, second and third quarters. Ooh. Doc, what do you think? The nails in the coffin for the Denver Raptors. Absolutely. KFC. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, both of them Both of them did well. I'll, how about this? I'll give mine to Oculusator. And Brutus, I'm going to put you on the spot to decide again. <laughs> As you always do, uh, and I've got to point out that Sweet Tooth had seven saves and like one exchange. Uh, but when you've got a team that's playing that well, how do you choose just one player? I don't know. I'll back it up uh, with the numbers and also the timing. Uh, I think you're right. If I think back on it, KFC had three three-pointers in the third quarter. When we went into halftime with Denver Raptors kind of crawling their way back in, I think those three-pointers really made the difference and made the fourth quarter uh, as, as irrelevant as it really was, as, as well as everybody played in the fourth quarter. I think things were over by the end of the third, and really that had a lot to do with the scoring from KFC. So we'll give KFC the player of the game for this matchup. But again, Echo Club, Kansas City, hitting on all cylinders right now. We are going to check out the second semifinals. New York Kings taking on the Orlando Cyclones. They both better be ready to take on the Psycho Club Kansas City. They have punched their ticket to the finals one week from today. You're not going to want to miss that matchup, and you're not going to want to miss this next match so we can see who Kansas City is playing in those finals. Do not go far. Saturday night, our finale, New York Kings, Orlando Cyclones coming back at you. We will be right back.
<laughs> Thanks. Is my mic good? Yeah, we've got you loud and clear here. How you got me? All right, perfect. Oculus Aider, you guys came out hitting on all cylinders and did not take your feet off of the gas. What did you do to prep for tonight's matchup? Uh, we just did a normal warm-up scrim, and we kept in mind that uh, our previous matches, Denver Raptors, we beat them twice already, and we just did the things that we did right the previous times, and we uh, worked on things that we didn't do right. When we looked at, like, when you look back at the VODs and you realize our weaknesses, we we just worked on those. Well, what you did certainly worked, so I hope other team captains that are listening are taking notes on that. You guys certainly played really, really well. You wouldn't have shown up as the number one seed if you hadn't all season. How has the season treated you? This is our first time going through a NEPA Pro Series and your first time competing as a professional in the playoffs. How was it? How was it different? Uh, I, love the, I love the rule set, to be honest. Like, uh, It's very different from VRMO, and I kind of like it, to be honest. So, I don't know, maybe VRML can adopt it or something. <laughs> That'd be sick. But, uh, yeah, playing as a pro is very fun. I love playing with new players, and I don't, I don't usually get to do that with VRML since, uh, you know, you pick your team, like uh, Faynam was saying earlier. And how have you approached that as a captain, building that chemistry over the short span of a pro, series, a pro season? How do I build the what? How do you chemistry? build that chemistry over the uh, short time of a pro season? Just scrims, to be honest. There's not, nothing much you can do. It's just play, practice, practice, practice. It's just, hey, there's no secret to it. To it. It's just a lot of people don't want to do it. And it's just practice. All right. Sweet Tooth had a great night and a goal. What would you see out of him? Sweet Tooth is nasty. Oh, my gosh. He is crazy. He's absolutely nutty. He got, like, one save. He tossed it out. He got another save. It was, like, the same possession, too. He got, like, three saves. And then the fourth one, they finally score. Honestly, defense. Our defense is, like heavily reliant on that guy and if he's popping off on defense oh my gosh yeah it's game over yeah and how does that motivate the rest of the team obviously you and kfc both popping off on the offensive end but you've got to build off of that energy from d oh yeah it's crazy he gets a save we're screaming kfc is screaming parent is screaming we're like yeah but then <laughs> we get scored on it goes down but you know what whatever dude that save those saves are crazy yeah indeed and uh it was a great match you guys were hitting Hitting the throttle for sure, and uh, it was super, super fun to watch. Now we get to watch another matchup. We've got the New York Kings taking on the Orlando Cyclones. Who do you like to win the match? And if you had to choose your opponent in the finals, who would it be? Oh, that's an easy dub for an NYK, dude. I got to go for them, guys. You know, they're my homies. Ow and Strombitsky, the easy class for them. Honestly, they just got to, like, I don't know. I'd say shut down game, but that's really hard to do. So maybe just shut down who's who he's partnered with. And, uh, yeah. Oh, who would I want to go against? Uh, shoot. Probably NYK, because I'd love to rub it in Strem's face. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, we will soon find out if you're going to get that chance. Again, congratulations. You won the first ever pro playoff game. So hats off to you and the rest of the team. You guys enjoy your night. Enjoy this next match. And we'll see you a week from tonight to see who takes home the championship. All right, bet. See you, man. Appreciate your time. See you. Yep.
Welcome back, NEPA fans. We have our first finalist set. Now we get to see who wins the second semifinal and who is going to face off a week from tonight in that final game against Echo Club Kansas City. We've got the New York Kings going up against the Orlando Cyclones, who check in as the number one seed, had a phenomenal season. But the New York Kings coming in hot after a blowout win against the Dallas Knights on Wednesday night. We should have some great action coming your way. I am joined by none other than Doc Education and Phenom, who are going to make the call for tonight. Gentlemen, what do you see on these rosters? What do you expect in the matchup? Go for it, Doc. Oh, well, I mean, what do I see on the rosters? I see a lot of uh, of of masterful players. That, that, that's what I see. Uh, obviously, Strembitsky on the on the left side of your screen. Uh, you know, we just saw uh, the teammate Oculusator from the the former New York Kings uh, VRML Season Four champions, um, uh, and now obviously uh, that that roster is uh, has a different name. But uh, the New York Kings of of Nepa uh, headed by Strembitsky. So and we heard from Oculusator. Obviously, uh, you know, a little bit of a little bit of pumping up of the teammates also. Uh, wanted to rub it in the face a little bit, so I'm sure Strem, you know, has some similar things to say uh, uh, on that. And on the other side, I mean, you know, uh, we got Gabe, we got Rosie Hope, we got Acorn, and we have the Netmaster, uh, who's actually Saluna. And we got to ask because uh, you know, it's, it's Saluna 22. Netmaster is the is uh, apparently Saluna's dad's headset. Netmaster 22. So I want now. I'm thinking like, what's 20? What what is the 22? What's the 22 reference? Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, I mean, and, and they're, they're amazing players across the board. This is going to be absolute fire from start to finish. I agree. I mean, all of these players are, are fantastic. I mean, we have, you know, Sprembitsky, you know, probably one of the best players all around in existence. First pick, um, you know, as, as captain for, for New York Kings. And then, obviously, game on the other side. Uh, you know, so Titans are, are absolutely clashing right now. And uh, I think it's really just the ability for Cyclones to have the kind of pre-built chemistry that they had, you know, coming from uh, from Ace in uh, VRPL. I mean, these players had, had already played together. So, you know, the, the chemistry was on the easy side for their team. Whereas, you know, Strombitsky and Green Pigeon and Ao and Jiggy, uh, uh, you know, they did not. You know, some of those probably have had very rarely played with each other. So, you know, they've had, you know, nine plus weeks to, to build up that chemistry. And, uh, you know, we've been able to see it through the series um, the first couple of weeks. You know, they de definitely had some some miscues, some some chemistry issues. But, you know, they're uh, they're in the finals for a reason. And that's because you know, they were able to, to get around that and, and really learn to each other as as players and, you know, get out of their uh, normal comfort zones that they would have seen in, in, in teams they chose for themselves. So it's going to be a, a, a fantastic game. I expect it will be. Talking about out of the comfort zone, how much does playing with the Netmaster headset affect Saluna? Both of these teams with full rosters tonight, so expecting a lot of great gameplay. We are going to get into the action. Doc, Phenom, take it away. Oh, no. Oh no, it is time. Let's see who gets out of the tunnels first. Who gets the head on it first? Oh, it is game with uncontested from the Kings. Acorn flying in, Acorn. So uh, no contest on the offensive joust leads to a goal in eight seconds for the Cyclones. I mean, that was a hell of a first start there. I mean, that was a... From 40 meters, about a two-second top pocket between the, the, the throw and the pass, so. Yeah, and uh, on their first offensive joust of the night are the Kings. Oh, they had it under control there, but one bad pass. And uh, luckily, that green pigeon was there. I think that I think that had a chance, that, that half-court mail slot. Uh, Jiggy now with an open goal. Oh, doesn't see it. Uh, and Disc is now floating, uh, was trying to just get it into an area for a re-grabbing stack. Jiggy now with the disc, passes over to Strem. Strem, uncontested. Oh, Acorn with the save. Sweet Tooth's teammate on Anomaly, doing what Sweet Tooth did in the last game, and absolutely with an incredible stop early on. Those, those pickups are huge, and um, now they're going to reset are the Kings. 
Jiggy flying in. Passes over to Strem. Strem going to do a bit of juking. Pass back to Jiggy. Jiggy to Pigeon. Pigeon. Top pocket. So really nice work by the King. Just really great uh, court vision there. Yeah, I mean, both these teams are are fantastic at, at positioning and rotation and and making their passes count. So, I mean, it's going to it's gonna look like this the whole time. You're going to see, you know, long clears and then dunks. You're going to see set up offense and defense. I mean, these, these two teams are extremely well matched. Yeah, so they're running an Ignite style rollout. I noticed this uh, toward the end of the Ignite, um, to the end of last season in, in, uh, in VRML. Uh, was this uh, this rollout where game and uh, and a regrabbing partner will uh, kind of uh, pick up the disc and then attempt to um, yeah have a, a left uh, left option and a right option a bit of a, a bit of a breakdown here but the goal's open oh no oh no what a save by Strem jumping out Acorn thought they had an open goal but Strem was just right in the area with the regrabbing stack Pigeon gonna take a shot oh just a little bit low and right. Uh, game gonna overshoot it though. Uh, luckily, the teammate picks it up uh, because that was that was an open goal opportunity. Acorn now gonna deliver it down low. Game gonna be in the area. Uh, can't quite handle it though. It's it's gonna be oh no, Saluna uncharacteristically missing. Um, she'll float around and uh, make a couple of bounces to the backside. Game you do not want. Game moving in space. Game juking everybody. Game over to Saluna. Saluna with the finish. So game bringing all the defensive attention and then passing off to the teammate. Nice work. Yeah, it happens when you have a, a player that dangerous because you know they can be dangerous in their own right, but because they're so dangerous, you see these defenses really hard committing on them. And if you have you know, other teammates like Acorn and Rosie and, and Saluna that are all capable in their own right. Sometimes that over-focus on that dangerous player just lets those other three right into the door, as we saw there. Yeah, and good good patience, good spacing by Saluna to wait for the right time to cut, find the right space to be in. Pigeon on the backside, picking it up, maybe going to deliver it down to Al. Loses the handle, uh, so we'll recollect. As a player on the backside, Strem is stunning. So it's a three on two off the backboard, off the head of Rosie. And we got ourselves a tie game. So blow for blow early days. And just like you said, Bainom, both of these teams showing uh, just a lot of skill, but also a lot of knowledge of the game in terms of how to how to move it about. Yeah, you're not going to see some, some grand plans or master strategies in work here. It is going to be you know, grind versus grind, you know, player player errors versus player errors. It's going to be completely on, you know, what these players do during the match because it's just they're you know, both teams are so accurate and so fast and so aggressive and, you know, it, it, it's going to be hard to, to really enact anything. It's just you're going off of, uh, of practice and a, as I, and I'm talking about this and they make a cloud shot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a cloud shot with Strem and I don't know who the regrabbing partner was, but they absolutely flew back and did get there just in time, but the momentum took them into the goal. So some great offense, some great defense, uh, but it resulted in, well, at least they took, at least they took it away from a three to a two. So there's a, a small victory there. And like you said, Bainam, it's going to be grinding uh, those small, you know, single point, uh, you know, little victories here and there might make the difference in the game. Pigeon getting stunned out. Saluna and game re-grabbing together. Netmaster is in fact Saluna playing on a different headset. Um, so we'll, we'll allow it. Uh, Rosie Hope flying in. Rosie with the beautiful juke and fight in the top pocket. So Orlando Cyclones getting the first back-to-back uh, -back goals of the evening, and they are now up by two goals, four points. Offensive joust now for the Kings. Strem delivering it down low. Game and uh, Saluna adding a lot of pressure. Strem gonna pick it up and just has to clear it out. Jiggy and Hour together. Uh, but they will bounce off a of Geo and Acorn will pick it up. That's a shot. Oh, oh, just a little bit wide right. Pigeon picking it up, sending it over. But who is there? Acorn and Rosie. 
Acorn sending it over to the right side. It's game, game over to over to Saluda. Saluda showing some moves on the back side and flicking it in. So a beautiful assist by game, and they're now up by six. Hey, it's just coming down to these, you know, little, you know, great plays by little mistakes that uh, that switch out between uh, between everything. So left side rollout. Uh, Jiggy gonna send it over to the right side. Pigeon uh, has Al low. Uh, does deliver to Al. Al, oh, Rosie cruising out of goal, making an absolutely huge stop. So uh, early days, there have been some a couple of really big saves. Uh, one by Acorn and one by Rosie. Pigeon now gonna have a little window. Gonna deliver it a little bit high. Uh, and uh, oh, oh no, oh no, Strem, absolutely punking game. I don't know if game didn't see Strem or didn't respect it, but the Reaper, Strem, stealing it and slamming it. I mean, you could see the physicality on that in the, in the replay. I mean, he got down, grabbed that disc and got down so fast that it had to be a jump. So he jumped for that, grabbed it out of his hands, and then crouched into goal. So, I mean, when, when people talk about, you know, the, the game has physicality, I mean, Strem is just showing you the, the, the upper limits of that perfectly. Yes, dreaming in a in a legal fashion. Exactly. We'll re, oh, we'll gosh. rebrand it. Oh, Strem in the area elected uh, to to let it go. Now it all. Strem with the juice up, down, all around, and sending it down low. Strem, Strem, eight to ten, ending round one. And so uh, we had ourselves a game. What a way to start! Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Honda. One man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Honda motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. This Wednesday, January 19th, the NEPA owners take over the arena and battle it out to see who can take home bragging rights. That's followed up by the Pro Series All-Star match. Boats end at 11 p.m. Central tonight. We got just over an hour and a half. Go now, go vote. Get to discord.gg forward slash NEPA to get your votes in. You can only catch these matches here on NEPA TV. For more information on the teams, follow NEPA TV on social media or visit nepavrpro.com. We are ready for our second quarter action. We've got a two-point game coming out of the first quarter. It's been back and forth. The stars of the game are carrying the action. And bringing it all to you, back to you, Doc and Phenom. All right, here they come. Strem this time does contest, gets the disc, uh, though Rosie and Acorn are right there. That's a that's a beautiful clear, and it's going to be game. Oh, what a save! Holy cow! I think that was Ow. And uh, wow, so some incredible defense early on uh, from both teams, Rosie with the disc juking not under any pressure so just kind of calmly moving now on the station gonna wait for the teammates to get into the best location no one's on rosie so she'll move up forward passes over to game game flying in floating very comfortable as always gonna maybe pass to rosie wide open oh no pigeon picks it up there's a three-person re-grabbing stack no one for the cyclones and uncharacteristic a couple of uncharacteristic mistakes by game, one to get uh, get the disc stolen by Strem, and the other to get stolen by Pigeon, and that's five points as a result for the Kings. Yeah, I mean you can you can tell the skill level of these players just at the the amount of speed switch that they can you know go from being you know okay we have to be very controlled right now to in a split second no hesitation being you know going and doing something like regrabbing back to the disc at high speeds as quickly as possible without even a second thought you know so kind of steal a uh, a uh, rock climbing term you know dino is to do you know the ability to just go from that static spot to a, a a quick play and that's what we're seeing just these dino moves from from both these teams the second they have an opening 
Wow. Strem with the assist, but ow. With the with the big time unofficial assist, getting the stun out on the goalie, allowing an easy finish by Pigeon. I I, I gotta mention because you said the word dino, and uh, I, I gotta put this out there. I think competitive leagues need to allow custom chassis. I, I want to see dinos. <laughs> it was I, talked about. It was talked about. Uh, I think it, one of the concerns was the uh, we didn't want it to be too cartoony. But I would I other than the dino chassis and maybe like the samurai ones, some of the new ones have been looking uh, more professional. We'll call it. So I'd love to see Rad kind of keep implementing some less crazy customizations, and I, I'll be all for it. No way. I say more crazy. I, I, I love the dino. The dino is my favorite by far. And uh, I think But the next one we need is another animal that is widely known in the community. We need the flamingo. I need to see flamingos in chat, y'all. Let Rad know we need a flamingo chassis right now. Ekin knows what's up. All right, back to the game. Kings are up by three. Uh, there's a little bit of little bit of back and forth. Rosie and um, it looks like Saluna are re-grabbing. That's a big time shot. Oh my goodness! Acorn from the tunnel tying it up. What a game we've got in this Eastern Finals. 13 to 13 right now. Tie game about halfway through quarter two. I mean, we said it was anyone's game, and it, it, it still is. I mean, these these two teams are playing fantastically. I mean, they're. Yeah, there's been so few times where you're like, okay, yeah, you know, this is we're, we're headed one way, or there's momentum one way. I mean, it's gone point for point. No, no team has ever really been in, in a uh, even remotely comfortable lead. I mean, they are just scrapping for the you know for the last round and a half, trying to you know figure out who's gonna take that you know one moment lead forwards that you can feel a little confident going into the uh, the rollouts. Yeah, and I mean, even this possession, uh, you know, neither team has been has been confident. There's so much pressure uh, on on both sides. Al now with the disc has Pigeon on the right side. Finds Strem somehow. Somehow Strem had a ton of space to go all the way from the ghost all the way in unopposed. You cannot let a player like that. You can't let any player at this level, let alone someone like Strem, operate like that, finding it easy, and the Kings have a lead now. That was all Al in the background there. The Saluna and Game Stack uh, on the pressure was was pushing in, uh, and then Al really focused on making sure that stack died uh, in the back line, so Al was to thank for that for that entire interaction that Strem had. Oh, wow, and Game getting stolen again, so very un uncharacteristic uh games had a few turnovers in this in this game uh and that is definitely uh been uh, i think five or seven points to the credit of the kings as a result uh, directly oh my god acorn finding saluna hanging out on the post beautiful passing so acorn as an offense generator with a three-pointer last uh last score and beautiful passing there and uh, I'll say, Saluna's uh, headset change seemingly having little impact in this game so far. Yeah, sometimes it can. I'm not quite sure if it's another CV1 or what it is. Oh, Jiggy just missing an open goal opportunity there. That was that was huge. Dodging a bullet uh, are the Cyclones. Uh, Regrabbing stack, flying back in. Strem going get, to get, uh, get beaten up a little bit by game. Game with the attempt on the ender, but Strem... Jumping right back in. Pigeon, though, getting punked. And it is Saluna who is doing the damage. Game flying in. So beautiful stun and steal by Saluna. And then the dimer to the flying game. Cyclones back up by two. So on their offensive rollout now are the Kings, Strem picking it up, Pigeon on the right side, does deliver it there, Jiggy on the floor, does deliver it there, Strem now on the left side, does deliver it there, all oh, that stack, oh, that's a shot, it's gonna be a little bit low. The back stack, very aggressive, Rosie and Acorn flying through, they did get the disc, now they've got an opportunity, it's gonna be game trying to operate, it's gonna be game, oh no. I swear, some players are just able to move faster. I don't know how, but that was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, this is the, I think, one of the big we've seen in the game so far of four points, you know, going into the into the half. This could be a, a big momentum swing for uh, 
for the Cyclones if they can kind of take the that small lead and, and push it into the next half. So, yeah, a little four-point lead, although definitely not comfortable. Uh, you know, both of these teams are are operating very well. Oh, ow, ooh. Ow, ow, ow. Great shot. Uh, but it is picked up. Jiggy in the area. Strem in the area. Pigeon in the area. Game is going to deliver it over the right side. Rosie. Rosie has a little bit of an angle, but doesn't shoot because that regrabbing stack was there, and they do get back. It's going to be Saluna. Passing it over to game. Game operating on the shoulder. Juking out everybody. Oh my goodness. You cannot stop that man. Juke and Strem. And it looked like Al as well. Uh, couldn't couldn't catch the other player, but yeah, two New York Kings could not get game. Up by six. I mean, this is the worry for New York Kings. I mean, they've been shutting down. Uh, game and his teammates for uh, almost two full rounds now. The last thing they need before a half is uh, for game to uh, start warming up. Yeah, Al not not taking that shot again. That that was an open goal. Uh, Pigeon now. Oh, Pigeon moving in. Nice work, Jiggy, causing a little bit of chaos in the bubble, just uh, creating some some focus for the defense. And that was big for the Kings because that that was a eight to nothing run uh, that was stopped, or eight to two run. Uh, so now only down by four are the Kings going into the halftime. 21-17, your Eastern Finals, NEPA Pro Series, Orlando Cyclones up by four. We're going to go to a short break and be right back. Come and compete with the pros March 18th through the 20th in St. Louis, Missouri. This one-of-a-kind event is supporting the Special Olympics and hosted at Bush Stadium's exclusive Redbird Club. With multiple brackets, side activities, and more, this will be the LAN event of 2022. Go to NEPAVRPro.com for more information. Guys, gotta outwork your opponents. Let's go. Three, two, one, fight. Ah. Oh, my goodness, what is going on? What are y'all doing, man? Come on! Back, what a match. It is halftime of your Eastern Conference Finals. We have a four-point match, and the best players in the game are doing exactly what they do best. Game, Strem, Saluna, that green pigeon, I mean, the play is as good as it gets. We'll take a look at the stats here. Phenom, what have you seen so far? I mean, in, in the best way possible, professional Echo. I mean, if, if you want to see what professional Echo is going to look like, yeah, I mean, you're looking at it. These are two teams that are so closely matched that are 
playing, you know, out of their minds right now. You know, it, it's 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 not you know chasing around discs. It's not you know juking all over the place. It is teamwork at its finest from both teams, seizing any opportunity that they can to to score or to steal or to stun. I mean, this is this is what you know Echo Arena you know, looks like at, at the highest level. And for people like me, we can only dream of playing this well. But when you get this group of players together, they've had the entire season now to get their chemistry going. The communication has to be tight because the passes are where they need to be. The stacks are not only moving quickly, but they're getting together quickly. It seems like defense is recovering when it needs to. Just an all-out, even matchup of great, great play. Doc, what have you seen so far? I mean, it's, it's just been a great, it's just been a really great game. Uh, there's been amazing individual skill and team skill. Uh, some surprising, some surprising shots um, and some surprising plays. Uh, but I mean, it's just been, it's just been a lot of fun to watch. And uh, I mean, it, the, it's very close, only, only four points difference. And it could be four points the other way, or it could be, it could, the, the, the score could be very different if a couple of different things had gone uh, a couple of different directions. I mean, uh, some beautiful saves uh, by, uh, by Acorn on, on one side and, uh, um, and Rosie, Rosie's got four saves. Um, on the other side, I mean, uh, Pigeon and Strem have really been stepping it up. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking forward to more of the same in round three and four. I think this game is going to come down to the wire. Uh, in, in, and I, I, I honestly, I can't make a prediction right now. I mean, uh, my, my, my gut says the Cyclones because I mean, you got game, uh, but also, I mean, Acorn. Rosie and Saluna are all playing extraordinarily well right now. Acorn had a monster of a save and a monster of a three-point shot from half court. Just like that, Strem though gets the disc, but re-grabbing right back to it, Game and Saluna. It's gonna be Rosie with a big time three. Oh, just a little bit wide. Game, Dukin, game all. Oh, just a little off the game. And uh, it's gonna be in the hands of Jiggy. So dodging a bullet there big time. Oh no, oh no, you cannot do that. You cannot do that in the semifinals. You just missed two shots from game. You have got to get that disc out. Cyclones score first in the second half, now up by six. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's feeling that one. The whole team probably knew exactly what uh, what was gonna happen after uh, a small error like that. I mean, you. The, these these level of players, you know, you make an error and, and pretty pretty well established that they're just going to take it and, and run with it. So, you know, that's what I was talking about at the at the beginning of the matches. It's it's just going to come down to you know who who makes better moves, who who doesn't you know uh, make those errors in the in the end here. And you know, we we talk about you know like two point swings, but realistically, if you if you have possession. And you get scored on, you know, you're looking at a, a minimum four point swing up to a six point swing, you know, when you go from having the disc at their bubble to getting it thrown back and put in your face. So that's how, you know, we see these games go from a super close match for an entire first half to, to an absolute way. I think that's what the Kings really need to do is just kind of find themselves and, and, and play exactly like they've been playing the whole game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rocktor, you, you you nailed it. Acorn, oh, wow. Woo! Wow, wow, wow. That was a heck of a save and really timely because only down by eight right now would have been down by 10 uh, and maybe would have been feeling it a little bit more now. Their rebounding stack is together. Jiggy with the clear, sending it in. Pigeon in the area, although Acorn and Rosie get right back and they're able to pick it up. Oh, no, there's a, maybe an opportunity for uh, the Kings game, though, picking it up and sending it back to Saluna. Pigeon and Al are adding a little bit of pressure. Oh, Strem, Punkin, Rosie, sending it over to Al. Al in space. Oh, no. Not quite sure where that was going. Uh, but now it's going to be sent over to the other side. And getting stunned out was Acorn. Um, and Pigeon is going to try and clear it through. Does. Although the, the flying stack does come in. 
A little bit of back and forth right now, Phenom, uh, and, uh, you know, but some missed opportunities for the Kings. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing coming into this for the Cyclones was their their stacking ability. I mean, that's what, you know, the, you have Acorn coming from Anomaly, one of the, you know, primarily fast stack teams. And then, you know, the chemistry of, of the other three all being, you know, very heavy to that, you know, 2v2 or 2v2 meta and the you know the stack speed but the kings have absolutely kept up with them almost this entire time as far as you know both the ability to read that stack and you know the next point of it oh unfortunate self pull there from uh i go through it looks like jiggy's head oh big yeah big big time tough uh this is a moment for the Kings, I mean, only down 10, and there's still a ton of time left, but they have not yet scored in this second half, and they've given up six points to the Cyclones, so that lead is starting to stretch, momentum starting to build for the New York Cyclones, and uh, a score here will be absolutely huge uh, for the confidence of the Kings. Pigeon, moving up, has an option on the floor, does deliver to the left side, Strem. Maybe going to pass to the right side. Yes, Al operating on the top. Oh, but Pigeon got stunned out. Great defense there. That was a, a great defensive stop. And that's got a chance. It's going to bounce into the bubble. Uh, Jiggy in the area, but flying faster is Saluna. But, oh, Jiggy, just stealing it. And now going to deliver it over. This is an opportunity for the Kings. But Game and Rosie are regrabbing too quickly. Al on the backside. So, some nice uh, play by both teams, and um, it's feeling very tenuous, though, for the Kings. So Acorn delivers it over to Rosie. Rosie in the area. Maybe going to pass down low. Electra back pass to Acorn. Acorn back to Rosie. Rosie over to the, to the Netmaster. Saluna getting stunned out. And that's going to be tapped out. Strem and Co. are re-grabbing out. Going to deliver it down. Can the stacks get together? There is just too much stunning. And an unfortunate bounce right back into the hands. The goal is open for the moment. Oh, just out of the outstretched hands of Saluna. That would have been almost a definite three with a shooter like Saluna. So dodging a bullet there are the Kings. And let's see what they can do. Strem, goal's open for the moment, but flying back was a defender. Pigeon passes off. Al in the area delivers it down. Jiggy gonna have Pigeon on the backside. Elects for the back pass to Strem. Strem gonna move up. Uh, gonna get the teammate Al. Oh, just on off the iron. Uh, so some really nice play by the Kings, but it turns into nothing. Yeah, they're doing really good at getting the disc up to the bubble, but they are. Seemingly struggling with the uh, the defensive style of uh, of the Cyclones right now. Uh, I'm not sure it's positioning from them or just you know the aggressiveness of that uh, that that front stack. You know they can't hold on to it very long before having to kind of make decisions. So if your your positioning isn't you know pitcher perfect, then you know they're going to capitalize on that. Great shot. Great shot, and that that absolutely stops the bleeding. First score of the second half six plus minutes in for the Kings. Let's hope that starts a little bit of a run because they were starting to feel like maybe uh, maybe the Cyclones were outpacing a little bit. Game and Saluna with the disc. Got to pass over to the left side, Rosie. Now let's see what Rosie does. Delivers over to the right side. And Acorn is in the area. Going to be immediately under pressure. Strem with a three-point shot. Oh, Strem just barely missing one there. That would have been huge. An opportunity here. Going to pick it up. Going to make some jukes. Strem doesn't get the three, but does collect the two. And so four quick points in less than a minute after going six minutes scoreless. And back within six are the Kings. Yeah, the same thing as, uh, as the first quarter, but on the opposite side. It'd be great for the Kings to just... You know, get a good pick or a good steal here, and and uh, get some great momentum coming into the uh, into the next quarter. On the opposite side, you know, the uh, Cyclones scoring on this possession is is going to be a, a hard one to to come in. Oh. What a save! 
Ow, with two huge saves this half already. Uh, absolutely crucial, especially just just energy and momentum wise, Phantom. You know, when you're when you're not scoring a lot and the other team is starting to creep up, uh, those saves can be absolutely huge. Game with the disc operating in space. Pigeon trying to trying to punk delivering over to Saluna to game. Oh, Ow again! Three massive saves by Ow. Keeping the team in the game, only down by six. We're going to quarter four with the Orlando Cyclones with a slim lead over the New York Kings. This is to go to the finals and to determine the Eastern Conference champion. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. This flag isn't backwards. It's facing this way because it's moving forward. Just like the men and women who wear it on their uniforms and the country it represents. They're all only meant to move one direction, which is why we fly it this way. On the flanks of the all new Grand Wagoneer, moving boldly and unstoppably forward. Friday nights at 9.30 p.m. Central. Be sure to check out Late Night with Ivan Thrive right here on Twitch. With fun games and exclusive interviews, we never know who will show up on Late Night VR. So join us at 9.30 p.m. Central right here on twitch.tv forward slash the NEPA TV at 9.30 p.m. Central. And now to the fourth quarter of the Eastern Conference Championship. One of these teams will have the chance to face off against Echo Club Kansas City. Let's see who it'll be. Fourth quarter, six-point match. Back to Doc and Fano. Dram with the disc, delivers it up. Pigeon picks it up. Jiggy with the goal open. Looking for the back pass, though. Floats down, and by that time, the door had closed. Over to Al. Al. Over to Pigeon. Pigeon. Top pocket. Yes. Beautiful casual flick at 16 meters a second. And New York Kings start off the fourth, the fourth quarter absolutely the way they needed. They are within four. Yeah, it's not so much just the scoring part, but, you know, in, in Echo, having that jealousy is not really advantageous. So, you know, pushing them immediately onto, uh, onto their heels is exactly what Kings needed to do to kind of help cement that lead, uh, closing the lead from, uh, from the Cyclones. Yeah, and just like that, the defense has won. Getting the disc back, Jiggy on the top side, Strem moving to the back side. Beautiful pass over, but Strem was picked up. Oh, Jiggy off the back side. Oh, 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 oh my. Somehow missed the dunk. It, do my eyes deceive me? Did it go straight through the goal? I gotta watch on the replay. Yeah, I just watched it on the replay. He, he, dunked it into the side of it and it kind of pushed him back there so he, he just hit so dead center in the pocket that it actually like ricocheted him backwards well lucky to pick up the two and now back within two are the kings six and a half minutes left we got ourselves a game game delivering it over to the netmaster saluna getting stunned out ow delivering it down pigeon Maybe going to clear. The stacks are together, so the, the clear is good. Oh, it takes a funny bounce, but they do redirect well. Strem with the disc. Going to make a beautiful back pass, and now it's out under pressure. Going to deliver right back to Strem. Strem operating its base. Rosie! Oh, my God. Oh, Strem! Rosie defending with the shield, somehow getting the save, but then Strem following it up with the slam to tie the game. 27-27 with five and a half left. Oculusator in chat saying, let's go. Let's go, Rosie, with the beautiful tap. Game flying through. Ow, oh no. Game. Big time three. First four of round four for the Cyclones. So uh, a little bit of a scoring drought there, two and a half minutes for the Cyclones, and but now they have scored and they are back up by three. Strem with the disc, over to Pigeon. 
Pigeon has Jiggy open on the left side. Game and uh, Saluna both giving stunned out a little bit of momentum. Pigeon attempting to keep them stunned out. Pigeon is keeping them stunned out. So there's an opportunity here, but Rosie shutting the door. What a save. Absolute maniacal play by Rosie. That was huge because Pigeon had off, had two players stunned out in the background. That was a power play for the Kings. Now, Saluna moving up, passing it over to game. Game, juking game. Bringing all the defenders out. Game, passing it over to Saluna. Saluna with the tap. Saluna with the pass. Ow, with the save. Ow, keeping the team in the game. Threm delivering it down low. And wow, what a defensive possession from both teams. Rosie on one side, Ow on the other. Now, Kings under control. Ow, with the disc. Has Strem on the backside. Stuns out Rosie. Beautiful back pass to Jiggy. Strem tapping over, moving over to the other left side pack. Netmaster, that's Saluna in garb. Jiggy now flying in over to Pigeon. Beautiful spacing. Beautiful control from the Kings. They get two. They're back within one. Three and a half minutes left. Come in after the Eastern Conference Finals. Three and a half minutes left to decide who goes to the championship. Strem in the regrabbing stack. Oh, tries to pass the pigeon, but it takes a bounce off that ramp. And they do lose it. That clear. Oh, the pass to Rosie. Oh my goodness. The stack is a little bit inaccurate, though. And now Strem is going to deliver it. Their stacks are not together, though. Jiggy and Pigeon do connect. Oh, not able to relocate, though. Pigeon, though, gets it back. Y'all, the actions per minute are absolutely insane right now. Everyone is going absolutely insane. Pigeon getting the stun out. Strem in the area. Too many players in the bubble, though, and will back it out. Over to Strem. Strem to the passing cutter. No. Pigeon not able to get there, but they immediately re-grab in the offensive half court. Ow, now. They're starting him. Delivers it up. It's going to be Acorn and Rosie overshooting, which gives Jiggy the chance to come back. So the doors are opening and shutting so quickly. That's a pass, or that's a clear, rather. And it's going to be... Oh, ow! Can't quite connect with the backside of the net. Strem. Oh, my God. Two minutes left. One point game. Every opportunity is huge. Strem losing it to game right there. Game picking it up. Game going to deliver it in. Game passes over to Netmaster. That's Saluna. Rosie tapping it in. Oh, just barely. That would have been huge. But right there, back is Saluna. Delivering it over to the right side. Game. Game delivers it to the floor. Acorn going to make a, a move and then pass it back to game. Game getting stunned out, though. Pigeon and Strem are together. They've got a chance, but the stack from Rosie and Acorn is also together. A minute and a half left. One point game still. Back and forth and back and forth. Game finally delivering a big time strike. Three points, two score difference with a minute left. I mean, every one of those interactions just on an absolute razor's edge could have gone uh, a goal or a save or a, a clear either way on every single one of those interactions. One minute left in the Eastern Conference Finals. The pressure is on the New York Kings. They are two goals down. They cannot give up any scores, and they must score two. This is not good. If this goes in this game, oh, no. Acorn, though, with another opportunity, that will... Just about do it. I am not a mathematician. That is not my. That is not what my degree is in. But I do think, I uh, still two scores. Maybe there's a chance if they get two very quick threes. But wow, the Scotland's have put the pressure on. Yeah, that that last uh, last minute was uh, the defining factor of all of that work. Pigeon with the disc, they have to move it quickly. Time is running out. Ow with the disc. 17, 16, 15. Jiggy with the three. Oh, it goes down as a three.
three. How much time will there be left? There nah, will be not enough. Second. Six. So yeah. close. So they need a quick steal and a big time three. Can the Kings do it? Oh no, my math was incorrect. It was a negative six seconds. Yeah. Clones are your Eastern what a game. champions. They will go to the finals to face off against Echo Club Kansas City. Congratulations to the new, to the Orlando Cyclones. What a match down to the wire. Really could have seen that go either way, all the way down to the last couple of minutes. The New York Kings had their chances. They just couldn't finish when they absolutely needed to. And the Orlando Cyclones close it out. Phenom, let's look at the stats. What do you see? Uh, the players have uh, left a little bit here. So let me have a look at the... I mean, possession time, 11 minutes to 10 minutes. It was so close. Even like shots taken, thirty-one to twenty-eight. Kings with thirty-one shots, and I mean, I think that's what made the big difference in that last four or five minutes. Both teams were making, you know, just little tiny mistakes about, you know, last-second shots. Green Pigeon made miss that open goal, and another interaction. There was a couple of them, but you know, the 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 saves from you know Rosie Hope seven saves. Game with four. Acorn with two. Saluna with two. I mean. Every single player in this game did every everything perfectly well. I mean, there was no you know like strikers and 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 mid play and every single player in this arena was doing everything they could in every position to make sure that you know their victory was sound. And I think just in uh, at a razor's edge, the Cyclones just outperformed a, a hair. Indeed, just a hair, just a one score victory but it is enough to send them to the finals doc in a match where the points are so even where you've got rosie with a seven saves stram and that green pigeon putting up great efforts al with just amazing defensive play how do we choose a single player of the game it's so hard and to to name one you know is to is to not not give credit as, as you just did to to all of these great players. I mean, it was it was an absolute team effort from both sides. Uh, it's very hard because there's 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 total stats and there was there was key moments. I don't I don't know. I I think I'm gonna give it to Rosie. I think I'm gonna give it to Rosie Hope because those saves, especially in crucial moments, were were absolutely huge. The points that she, uh, weren't a ton. Uh, but they they were key as well. Um, Bane, I'm shaking the head, but uh, but the saves were were awesome. I, I, I mean, love a good I'm defense. Not... Bane, yeah. what do you think? I, I'm not shaking my head because I think you're wrong. I'm shaking my head because I, I I legitimately cannot. It's so. I mean, every single player contributed to that match. There wasn't, uh, you know, one person that was was uh, you know directly involved. I I, I would put. Either Strem or Ao probably in that in that in that top spot. Strem just put so much uh, 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 chaos into the the defense of. I think he got a lot of the, like the 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 snags and fighting uh, game on on most of the defenses. And then you have you know Ao who was making incredible saves from what is realistically the best striker that's ever lived. So, you know, th to be able to save three shots almost back to back is, is crazy to be able to save three of games shots back to back. I think, uh, uh, you put some up there. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to say ow for that, for that match. Cause I think as far as difficulty of what they did, uh, you know, I, I, I gotta say that that's probably the, the, the most, skillful moment was trying to make those saves you know it, with this amount of pressure on against that you know these level of players you'd be able to you know you know you know it's not a fluke when it happens you know four times in a match against the same player i mean he, he was he was getting red yep no doubt uh hats off to you both best offense is a good defense you both chose goalies and i respect that 
one goal is three points better tonight, though. So if I have to choose between the two, I'm going to go with the winner. Rosie Hope's going to walk away with the player of the game. But let's be honest, all eight of the players who participated were outstanding tonight. Right up there with the best matches we've seen all season long. And thanks to that effort, the Orlando Cyclones are going to get to play one more time. The final is set. We will see Echo Club Kansas City taking on your Orlando Cyclones. Tune in next week. Make sure you don't miss that action. We'll also have the AAA finals earlier tonight. The Memphis Sounds and the Toledo Clippers won. So we'll be a AAA final and then the pro final to follow. Before we leave tonight, though, we're going to jump into a quick interview. We'll be right with you. Good. No, not yet. All right. Hello. Good evening, Saluna. How are you? Good. How are you? Hello. You feeling great after that victory? What did you think of the game? Um. What? Sorry. What was that? I said you've got to be feeling great after that victory. What did you think of the match? I thought it was really fun and competitive. Um. I don't know if you know, but I'm also Game and Rosie are both here too. Uh what hey, all? what's up? Congrats, Eastern Conference champions. That's got to feel great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes, indeed. Uh, so oh. you're going to get a chance to take on Echo Club Kansas City. It's got to feel good coming off a difficult and contested game like this, knowing that you're playing your best. Saluna, so, you were playing with a different headset tonight, did that affect your play or your style at all? Um, I mean, I was still on CB1, um, but it was just like a different environment. Like there's people clapping around us and saying all this stuff around us. It was just a different environment in general. I think there were like, we weren't used to where we were really exactly, but overall, I think we played decent. And yeah, I'm really glad we won that one. Yeah, I think you played really well, and uh, you're going to get a lot more of that cheering at the Nepa land, so can't wait to uh, meet and see you there. Oculizator, what a run it has been. Orlando Cyclones, top of the league, start to finish. What is it about this team that's been so special and has given you a chance now to walk home with the cup with just one more win? Yeah, it's been an honor. It's been fun. Did he say anything? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, game. You say something. And I think I said Oculusator instead of game. My apologies for that. Yeah, you got oh, it. Last interview. So <laughs> game, that was that was a shout out to you. Uh, as the captain, you've built this team. You've groomed this team. They're playing fantastic. What's it been and what's it like to play with this team? Oh, uh, it's exactly what I thought it'd be. We're exactly where I thought I'd be. Um, we're all we all play great together. It's our chemistry. It's Everything, we, we, we're just friends, we, we play well together, and it just feels good to be here at, at this moment with people I care about. Yeah, that's great. Rosie, you probably didn't hear it because I know you were busy playing and not watching the cast, but you walked home with the player of the game for tonight's matchup. Your defense, no your defense impressed all three of us, so it was, uh, it was uh, a great, great performance. Your saves against some of the best players in the world were just super impressive. What was it you think that gave you that effort tonight and and have you had that great defensive play? I think honestly I've always played like I, I've always played a lot better when I have the like when I have people around me that are like supporting me and bringing me up and I think that um, my defense it was like really supported by Acorn especially I couldn't do it without my backstack partner and also um, I think just being in the environment with game and Saluna here, it kind of gave me like an extra motivation, extra push almost to kind of bring my uh, defense to the next level. But I know that we, even though we, even though we won and we played really good, I think we can do even better and my defense can do even better. And I think, I think this is only the start. I'm, I'm excited for finals. I am excited for the finals as well. It's going to be a great matchup. Can't wait to see what you guys do against Kansas City. Again, congrats, Eastern Conference champions. One more win, and you're going to go home with the very first NEPA Cup. So good luck to you in the future. Thank you for your time tonight. Great game. Congrats. Of Thank course. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice night. Nice night. <laughs>
Good interview there. Doc, Phenom, any final words? I mean, it's pretty much just a, what I what I was talking about in the middle of the match. I mean, if, if you want to look at the, the future of, of professional Echo and what it's going to look like, uh, I mean, I, I hope every future match looks just like that. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. Yeah, I'll I'll echo that. Uh, it it was it was just a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, from start to finish, I don't think any team had. I think there, I guess there was a ten point lead, uh, like earlier on, uh, but pretty quickly that 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 shrank. And um, uh, yeah, it was just it was it was great play by by both teams. Um, and it was it was great to hear that interview. You know, to to hear hear those players all in the same place uh in a land like the the human voices uh together and to hear from rosie that she felt like her her play was elevated because of the support uh from the from the community you know we're we've all been missing that uh a little bit more uh lately uh in the last couple of years and so it's good that things are you know things are kind of coming back and uh it's just great to see a community like echo that you know some of these players uh you know a lot of us well, that's all we know is people uh, in the in the head in the headset, uh, and now we're starting to come to these lands. And of course, we got the Nepa land coming up in just a couple of months here, uh, which will be another great opportunity to to connect and uh, and meet folks and see see everyone. So that'll be a, a, an amazing event, and uh, it's just cool. It's cool to see the community grow, and it's cool to see uh, you know here we are on the cusp of these finals coming up. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just stoked to be here. So. Uh, yeah, uh, glad uh, glad to see these players and looking forward to Echo Club Kansas City against the Orlando Cyclones. That's going to be uh, and uh, and on the other side, Memphis Sounds against um, the uh, who was the the other Clippers. winner, the Clippers, the Toledo Clippers. So those will both be amazing matches. Yes, indeed they will. I can't wait to be back for those. I will not be back on Wednesday because I'll be busy embarrassing myself in the arena. So I hope the viewers are back to at least laugh at me, if not enjoy some good play. The exciting game that night, though, is going to be the All-Star match. You have one hour, one hour. Get to discord.gg forward slash NEPA right now. Get your votes in. Choose the players that you want to see play in the All-Star match going to be great stuff there you can also go to nepavrpro.com to check out all of the news on the nepa land event that's coming up in march another great chance to interact with the players like doc brought up doc education Phenom, great great job tonight we enjoyed some awesome arena can't wait to get to these finals always a pleasure see ya